do you want to do the intro? You want to do it to do the intro also? How about we both do I it? I think the look is enough for me uh-huh. for you to know what I want to do. You want to do it? No, you already know what I oh. want to do. I no, I don't. That's just, why. Just I asked. do the intro. Just do the intro. Okay. Oh, oh, oh! We're bringing it back. Bringing it back. Welcome back to Bold of You to Say. Welcome back to Bold of You to Say. <laughs> all right, that's a, that's enough. We okay. bring the heat. All right, all right. We have neighbors. <coughs> it's dark out. <coughs> These are these are sleepy hours, Gavin. It's sleepy hours. I forgot how time. loud you get with that. I am sorry. Anyway, we're back with another episode. Hi, we're back. This week we talked about Glass Onion. <laughs> Glass Onion. Best movie ever. Really good. Really good. I I would say actually though. Yeah. Um, can we please get a Blu-ray release, please? And or even Green Ray. Yeah, Blu-ray. if they can figure out that technology. <sighs> or yellow. What is it powered by grass? My cum. Grass Onion. Anyway, we more like ass onion. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, did a little uh, Ohio train derailment addendum that feels like so long ago. It does. It does. Uh, and we talked about a few few other news stories, and there are timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. You can skip a certain part, or if you just can't wait to get to a certain part, use it. Whatever. Don't use it if you don't want to. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't affect me. You already downloaded the episode. Yeah. So. I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, like and subscribe. Comment if you have anything to say, as long as it's nice. Remember, nice comments only. Mm-hmm. We have very fragile egos. Leave a review on Podchaser. That's like an IMDb type site for podcasts or on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. Wherever you can, if you want. YouTube is doing weird stuff with podcasts. They're like sort of doing podcast integration, but it's just the normal podcast like videos. Yeah. They're not changing much about how the, the back end works. They're just kind of organizing it differently. But anyway, if they let people leave reviews on podcasts on YouTube, do that. Right. Future proofing. Anyway, I feel like there's more to say, but I think we got it all. I think we got it all. It's, uh, if, not it's, in, in, if not in message, in, uh, in volume. Look, look. All that I will say is... Let's, uh, let's... Let's, uh, jump in here. Let's check these. Uh, let's check these. Let's check I want to add on to a couple of the things from the segment uh, last, what was it, like three weeks ago now? Yeah, yeah. yeah th- sometime in the last year. So a couple couple of things like what could Pete Buttigieg do? Uh, one of them is reassess the cost benefit analysis. So the mechanism by which that uh, the, the regulation about like the breaks, the, the Obama era one, like the mechanism by which it was repealed under Trump is the lobbyists basically were like, Hey, this is actually really expensive and it's not worth the money. And like, think about the profits, please. Won't someone think of the shareholders? So (laughs) they, so they did a a cost benefit analysis, uh, basically saying it's not worth it to require, you know, these, these better breaks on, you know, these, these trains hauling dangerous cargo. Right. So something that is totally within the purview of the Department of Transportation is to just revisit that and do a new cost benefit analysis and just come to the conclusion that, yeah, it is actually worth it to, you know, like the the benefits outweigh the costs when it comes to like regulating more effective breaks. I don't know. I, you know, I, I like it better when hundreds of thousands of people are made to suffer. Yeah, so, you know, when you think about it, though, like, yeah, you know, sure, you know, thousands, hundreds of people are going to be poisoned. No, no, no. I think it'd be great if a dude was like, yeah, sure, hundreds, thousands, people are being poisoned. (laughs) It gets, like, really quiet about the thousands part. Yeah, okay, we will, you know, the the human capital stock will dwindle, you know, we'll see it, (laughs) they, like, word it in, like, a like a dehumanizing way. Like, right. Yeah, you know, the, we will see a decrease in human I mean, capital stock. What is a state, but a human zoo, right? You know, what are people, if not 
autom- automatons uh, made of meat. Listen, what are what are humans if not machinery that we have to feed? I've never seen an animal wage war. Good point. Therefore. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this one, the second thing I meant to look into more and find sources on, find the specifics, um, but I forgot. So I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Biden was at like a fucking conference hey, listen, and he's just like, I want to talk to you about something. I I saw some turkeys and 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 I was going to talk about the. Uh, hey, you know, I was gonna economy, but I forgot. I was gonna go over the State of the Union, but uh, I forgot. I forgot. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna go play CS:GO with Trump and Obama. Yeah, dude. I okay. Yeah, getting off topic already. And <laughs> what I, else do we'll, we do? We'll not what dwell on this. this podcast we'll not about? dwell on this. But I have been <laughs> loving the. Some of them, some of them are kind of like not that great. But like when they hit. Those are so funny to me. What are the 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 Obama oh, Biden yeah. Trump? No, some of them the are shit. Video. But like, some of them are like, okay, yeah, ha, ha, Obama swearing. You know, yeah, Joe Biden saying "fuck you, Donald." Ah, but like the ones that capture like the vibe of right, them, right, like the ones that feel in character. I love those exactly. But so anyway, the second uh, thing that could be done, I don't have a lot of specifics on this, so sorry but uh like when this administration was like you know moving and like transitioning into the white house yeah bernie sanders and rokana basically drafted like uh like a plan to improve to fuck your mom yeah well that and uh they drafted basically a plan to uh it, it was like things that the department of transportation could do within their power right and right. a lot of it had to do with like enforcing current regulations uh proposing new regulations um like that that kind of thing yeah and a lot of it like like what they had proposed would have stopped the fiasco with the airlines, like okay. you know what happened a few months ago, yeah, and the stuff with the the train derailment. I yeah. believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the cost benefit analysis, th- uh, that that whole thing might have been rolled into that. Okay, but I, you know, I could be wrong. But so anyway, that's all to say, you know, there's stuff that they could have done that was within their power that I wish I had just remembered to bring up last episode. Yeah, but. Anyway, um, the last thing that I want to say about the train derailment situation is uh, you brought up the governor refused uh, like federal aid. I heard that from a thing I saw Biden say. I that may have been incorrect. No, I, I, I did hear that um, like in a in a different show that I was okay. listening to. Yeah. Um, so like that's that's true. And uh, yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. What like okay? Here's the thing, it's okay to be like, oh shit, shit's shitty, fuck, uh, this is shitty, but you can't complain if someone's like, hey, I uh, let me help you fix this because you're obviously in a shitty fucking state right now. He's yeah, you're in Ohio. You're, he's looking. At, oh my god, I'm I'm so loud. Anyway, you have no right to be like, like oh the federal government is doing shit, and the federal government's like, you want. I already asked you before you said we were shitty, but like, mm-hmm. do you want some help? And you're like, no. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really. Like they can bring FEMA down there to at least help. Yeah. I didn't really know what to think of it when you had brought it up. Cause like, I didn't know the, the specifics of it. I didn't know either. At the but time. yeah, the governor just is, uh, from what I remember hearing in passing kind of a weird MAGA lunatic. <laughs> or at least someone that would refuse federal aid in a uh, in a in a in a disaster. It's it's so it's almost a twist of like irony. They spilled cancer. Yeah. They spilled cancer on a town. They spilled cancer into the water supply of a town. The most clear-cut case where you would want federal aid. Yeah. Um like just... if you were if you were to think of a hypothetical like Hey, would you would you would you accept federal aid? Like, if if the question was to set up, of course I would accept federal aid. It would be, what if cancer was spilled on a town? <laughs> <laughs> what if someone what? gave 
like a, a thousand people cancer. What if someone gave a hundred thousand people? Borderline on purpose. Right. I mean, I just, I just don't. I, I really think it's kind of ironic that the people who are like, yeah, Trump actually cares. Like... They have their people in power, at least in Ohio, right? Yeah, and yeah, and I, I will say if you are if you are a Trumpster, I like to call them. I like to call them Trumpets. Just, just remember, um, he's not your guy. He hates you. Yeah, he hates you. Um, yeah, I only brought up like him going down there, like like that's all to say, like yeah, he hates you. It doesn't care. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I still say like that's it's kind of unacceptable. Like, like if you are a Democrat, like, shouldn't you want your people doing that before they can? Like, like the Republicans swooped in and they like gave like emotional comfort when it was the easiest thing in the world to do. Right. Like, all you have to do is go down there and say shit's shitty. Um, not even shit. propose. Yeah, you just gotta say shit. Yeah. And just purely on strategy. Throw some toilet paper at them. Yeah. If you're a if you're a Democrat and you know you're trying to be the good guy beating the bad guys, like that's like step one. Say she, she. I do wanna because they're not even proposing solutions. Right. They're do, just saying shit's fucked. I do wanna clear some air though. Even though I'm saying it's kind of ironic that they got their peeps in power and now that like their peeps are in power, they're like rejecting the the supplies they need to do their job. Um, I do want to say, though, that like I feel bad for people of Ohio, regardless of political standing. Oh, yeah. No obviously. one deserves to have cancer no one... spilled on them. Even if you voted saying... in the governor that refused federal aid, like on a macro level, like, yeah, like it 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 is ironic when people vote against their class interests, right. but you still don't deserve to have that yeah. happen to you. I believe in a country that when shit, shitty shit happens, uh, that they w will help you. <laughs> yeah. That's kind that's, of Gavin. That's bold of you to say. Yeah. That's, that's bold of you to say. Yeah. Anyway, I believe in effective <laughs> government. <laughs> um, I do have a couple of tweets linked that I have, neglected to organize um okay yeah we can talk about this one so uh we brought up um the uh the president's like the the ai the deep fake videos did they make a deep fake video of biden i yeah I, I think i told you about this on the phone but uh the patriot oasis uh <laughs> what i yeah, I, I could not tell Wait, you this first thing about them. A whole video of fake Biden saying like some crazy ass shit. Because well, this is a great way to send like a video like that to China. Oh yeah. Let me then, let me lead by reading the uh the Twitter bio for this for this group. The Oasis for True American Patriots, American flag emoji. Breaking news political commentary, conservatives, freedom veterans, hashtag one A, hashtag two A. Um and it appears to be like they appear to have tweeted a few more videos like the Biden one. But this Biden video is uh, it, it's it's a bit it's is it just like fake? three minutes. So I won't play it. But this is the caption that they posted it with breaking Biden calls for a national draft. Men and women are to be selected to fight in Ukraine. Biden, quote, the recommended way forward will be to invoke the Selective Service Act, as is my authority as president. I'll play a little bit just so we can hear Sequence the, the intonation, etc. Will be men and women whose 20th birthday falls during calendar year 2023. Remember, you're not sending your sons and daughters to war. You're sending them to freedom. God bless our troops and God bless Ukraine. God bless our troops. and God bless Ukraine. Well, we just now played some, for you some some guy commenting over it. Anyway, you might think that sounds a little fake. That sounds a little. It's talking AI. way too fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, talking but you might you might think like, oh, you know, that's that's just what Joe Biden sounds like. Uh, that was a deep fake. Yeah. 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 No, exactly talking, what you were describing. He was talking way too fast for it to be Biden. That's what threw me off. And he's like, we're sending your we're not sending our, our sons and daughters to Ukraine to fight. Where, and I'm like, okay. They he, put the they put the Ben Shapiro intonation over right. the Joe Biden uh, voice data. Um, he I think he would have said it like, we're uh, 
Listen here, Jack. We're uh. Hey, listen. Listen. Hey, and then let you like be, work let, in some old timey cliche. Let me be clear. We're not sending our uh, sons and daughters. To- listen, you can put a honey on a fly swatter, but that don't mean that you're making tea. <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is that? Mean? I don't know, but it's something you would say. Listen, you can make a green man Google. That doesn't mean he's gonna fight. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But anyway, the way that I found this, I'll just I'll shout out who I found. It was a quote tweet from at Voices by Zane. Uh, he said, oh, look, it's the fucking thing everyone said was going to happen when deep fakes and voice synthesis got better. Hope the president's playing Overwatch vids were worth it because this is where we are now. Yeah, absolutely right. Like the, the, the videos, like the TikToks of like, you know, Joe Biden playing CSGO with Obama and, and Trump. Like they're cute. That's funny. They're funny. But, like, we really got to, like, try to put the genie back in the bottle on this. Like, imagine if someone just made a deep fake of, like, Biden saying, I signed a documentation to allow us to nuke China. Right. Well, how, I mean, how how soon is it before we have, like, deep fake wars? Like, how, like, wh- how, how long is it until, like, well, and that's why they have, either, like, a, like a deep fake Joe Biden says something and the real Joe Biden has to come out and correct it, or the real Joe Biden says something, but someone puts out a deep fake that's like, hey, listen, Jack, I didn't actually say that. Uh, and you don't know what to believe. And this is why I feel it's really important for world leaders to have, like, a phone connection to one another. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just so it's like, hey, did you you said you're going to nuke us? Is that is that what you're... Is that what we're gonna do? And he's gonna be like, "God no!" What? Where'd you Stacey get that from? told Jenny that Abby said that you kissed my boyfriend. Basically. Yeah. 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 No, we we need heavier regulation on it. We kind of need like it's already a little bit too late, but we yeah. need to like do something about it before it gets really bad. Well, especially with like China's kind of foreign policy stuff that they're going on that's going on with them right now, where. You know, if a deep fake gets out doing something that's not average for what America does with foreign policy with China, China is really good at at taking steps to like further their own power and initiatives. Right. And then They're be an like, empire. right. And then be like, and then America is going to be like, that was a deep fake. It wasn't real. Don't do that. And China's going to say, well, we can't verify that it wasn't fake mm-hmm. or that it was fake. So we're going to keep these actions in play yeah well some countries like some world leaders will just lie like they'll just say like you know something is something that came out about them as fake or 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 you know try to pass off fake stuff as real and i feel like this is just gonna like you know mix it all up but yeah that's that's Uh, that's that's that's, that's, oh look look the best the best way to get something done still is, uh, you know, if you if you really, you know, if you hold near and dear to you that you uh, is that a fucking Bakugan? Yeah, it is. It's a dragonoid, but not. Dude, it's okay. Look, look. Before you get excited, hold on. Let me find a. Is this metal? Am I putting this on metal? Is it? It has to be magnetic, doesn't it? It just has to be any metal. Oh, um, dude. As you can see, it's the new Dragonoid. It's not oh. the one that we grew up with. With the horn that comes out from... Yeah, oh. the one that like folds out. Yeah. Yeah. I got this with uh, with Jake when I uh, came up north uh, sometime recently. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, the best way to get something done, yeah, as the, you were saying. Well, let's just... Uh, actually, we do have Joe Biden in the studio with yeah. us. Uh, very, very luckily. Mr. President, what do you have to All say right, about Mr. this? Mr. President, take it away. So the best way to get something done, if you, if it holds near and dear to you that you uh, um, like to be able to... Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Wow, wow. Mr. President, while we have you in the studio... Mr. Mr. President, what is the best way to get something done? Um, <laughs> no, Mr. President, while we have you in the studio, can we get you to say one th- Can we just look at, can we just get you to say, look at those turkeys, please? <laughs> so we, can, we can say that you actually said. Before the AI stuff gets regulated, I want to like, I want to like download a clip of like AI Joe Biden actually saying, look at these turkeys. Look, look, look at those turkeys. Look at these turkeys. Look at those turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I uh, I had another thing uh, linked. 
Remember our look at those hand, uh, the uh, hands of Armageddon. Oh, the yeah, the hands of Armageddon. Uh, hands of Armageddon make my homework. Yeah, so <laughs> the hands of Armageddon. It turns out started the war in Ukraine. <laughs> no, you know what? Maybe <laughs> that train in Ohio. This is going to be really insensitive. Maybe that. <laughs> Let me open this by saying it's going to be really insensitive. <laughs> maybe that train in Ohio, maybe North Folk Southern was hauling. Maybe they were transporting the hands of Armageddon. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, the hand, So wait, the hands of Armageddon are cancer causing. Well, look, if it can cause the Grand Canyon, uh, I think all bets are off. It started like the Chicago fire or a, was it a Chicago earthquake or something caused a fire and an earthquake and the grand Canyon and a fire quake, which is what I call it when I eat taco bell yeah. and fart. So yeah, fuck it. Why, why not? Why couldn't it? Why should we cap the hands toxic, of Armageddon's hazardous ability. chemicals? Right. Anyway, I was gonna talk about a bunch of like anti-trans legislation. Um, I will briefly go over this one. This is from uh, Kentucky. Uh, it's one of those like anti drag bills. Wait, this is from Kentucky. Uh, yeah. So this is from it's the Allison only, Chapman. If this is from Kentucky, then it's the only Ken I'd Tucky. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the the caption uh, from at Alley Rain twenty two. Kentucky Senate Veterans, Military Affairs, and Public Protection Committee has passed an amended SB 115. This bill, this bill could jail trans people for up to 90 days for existing in public spaces. Words cannot describe how devastating this is to me. So uh, part of it, uh, it, it says, you know, adult performances uh, include uh, male or female impersonators. So basically, if you dress as the opposite sex. Uh, it says a person is engaging in an adult performance when he or she engages in an adult, an adult performance. Hold on. A person is guilty of engaging in an adult performance when he in, when he or she engages in an adult performance. Am I crazy or, or is it saying you engage in an adult performance when you engage in an adult performance? Yeah. Anyway, uh, A, on publicly owned property, or B, in a location where the person knows or should know that the adult performance could be viewed by a person under the age of 18 years. Engaging in adult performance is a class B demeanor for the first offense, a class A misdemeanor for the second offense, and a class D felony for the third and any subsequent uh, offense. So basically just outlawing uh well, this cross-dressing kinda, or this, being transgender this in public scares me because i wear some boots with like heels on them yeah i wear chelsea boots could be classified as as high heels not even high heels just heels yeah a little girly to some people a little fruity mm-hmm. um i like them they're stylish in my opinion um but if i'm there they might be like sir you need to stop your performance yeah well yeah they they really define it broadly because they don't say what a performance is. They just say that, yeah, they say, yeah, that's the whole point of it, just to outlaw trans people yeah. existing. Um, yeah, they they just say that you're engaging in an adult performance if you dress as a quote-unquote male or female impersonator, and who, whatever that means. So wait, does that mean dudes with kilts like just can't walk around in Kentucky now, or what? I mean, if you're by definition uh, here, that's a that's a skirt, sir. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they or like if someone someone wears like a dress, but it's it's it has a plaid on it. Technically, is kilt. So right. Well, yeah. Before we get into it, that is the intention. It is meant to confuse. It's meant to scare people into just not existing while trans. Um, but yeah, it does not hold up to any amount of scrutiny. Well, also because like, what is. What is a a male um, impersonation or a female impersonation? If a woman (laughs) wears her boyfriend's plaid shirt, like, is that a male uh, impersonation? Is are we are we going back to making it illegal for women to wear pants in public? Yes. Is that like that's seriously what it seems like we're going Uh, back to? They can only wear dresses and they're not allowed to wear underwear. (laughs) Um, Actually, there's no underwear in space. Carrie Fisher. <laughs> That's a real thing George Lucas said. You can look that up. Yeah. 
Oh, that was fucked up. But yeah, there were some other anti-trans bills. Honestly, too many to name. Um, but it one, it's depressing to list off all of them. Um, and two, uh, I I think it you know serves my point equally well just to address that there. I, I believe it's like roughly two thirds of the states uh, in this great union of ours uh, have either proposed or passed. Uh, anti-trans legislation along the same lines as this basically you're not allowed to be trans in public like you know because this also like can dig into like religious ideology too and so like i i just see this being used as a like a we just don't like you so we're gonna find something that you do that absolutely goes against this bill yeah not even about trans people just about like anyone we like hey are you not straight white and christian yeah yeah, that's basically Go to jail. it. Well, yeah, like how again, how do you define what women's clothing is when you like you have to contend with a number of different like cultures depending on where you live. Right. Like if you're if you pass like uh like I know like some like uh like like more devout like Muslim priests wear that thing that's like it's like a long like yeah. shirt thing. Like shirt dress looking thing. Like, yeah, how that's not me trying to be like insensitive. It just to and from a Western Just the best descriptor view. we can think of. Yeah. Like how do you legally make that distinct from a dress? Yeah. Like what legally I know it's not a dress, but how do you do, how do you prove that in a court of law? And also it's not even like to prove anything. It's just to be like, hey, if we don't like you, we can throw you in jail. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like with that example, like you could criminalize a lot of Muslims just for, you know, quote unquote, cross dressing. Yeah. Like, hey, guys, do you have any hair extensions? Yeah. At all. Any hair. Do you have uh, technically a wig is a hair extension? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And like a lot of states are banning gender affirming care um, just a, as a, a blanket thing across the board. Yeah. Um, so are hair plugs outlawed then? I guess. Yeah. But you know they're not going to enforce it on that. No. No, of course. They're not. Like, Joe Rogan takes HGH, and he's also one of the most prominent transphobes, at least when it comes What's to, HGH? like... What's HGH? Um, I, think, I think I might be thinking of HRT, um, but he's, he, I believe he's, like, taking testosterone, or at least like, so that's what people So he's taking steroids, are, basically. Um, I don't know if it's exactly steroids, but, like, a lot of people are saying, like, due to, like, different, like, aspects of his body, like, he has, like telltale signs of uh of like taking either hgh or like like other like hormones oh but even if it's not true in that case like i i cannot prove at this moment that joe rogan specifically is on anything but a lot of men suffice it to say are on you know different hormones they're on hrt um in practice and in in and in in concept, the same thing that trans men do. Yeah. So is that outlawed? Because that's gender affirming care. Anything yeah. that makes you feel more like a man is technically gender or affirming a woman. care. Or a woman. Yeah. Yeah. If you are a cancer patient and you lose all of your hair and and you're a woman and like you wanna feel, you know, for lack of a better term, more normal and you wanna like wear a wig. Like you wanna just exist as you had been for years like that's that's gender affirming listen if you're a guy who likes wine guess what wine is more fruity. for women little, little fruity little fruity that's kind of gay <laughs> kinda, it's okay homies is it gay to like wine all right the prosecution will now take the stand your honor a little bit fruity <laughs> <laughs> just as a little wrist no. flick like your honor Come on. Come on. He's a little. No, I, I just remember that one. Um, It was like a Halo meme where one Halo dude looks at the other and goes, it's a little gay. <laughs> yeah. It's a little gay. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be like a new method of prosecution. Well, this is why I like the state of Michigan, because at least. I, I, I will say I did see a list on Twitter the other day of states that didn't propose any uh, anti-trans legislation. Michigan was one of them. Yeah. Luckily. Well, this is why I like Michigan, because even like. So if you go to some rural communities, you'll see people who are just like, who are generally conservative, but like ideologically apolitical. You know what I mean? Like as things sure. pertain to them, they're like, no, I just, this is how I lead life. 
but like politically they're just like no i'm just a farmer or i just do this or that yeah well i i'm from an area like that and i think a lot of it is some people treat politics like uh like a sport or like like oh, pro wrestling right. yeah where like they have a team and they like their team mm-hmm. but they don't really know or care much about policy right well like you've seen videos of it like people like at a trump rally they're waving the flag yeah. you know some of them got tattoos of the dude yeah but you ask them you ask them what they like about trump and his policies and they can't name a single thing well but like what i'm what i'm trying to get at is like at least from what i've picked up in michigan you will find people who are homophobic a lot of people who are homophobic um Mm -hmm. but in general from what i've kind of like observed just living here that um a lot of people just want to live their life (laughs) and they don't see an issue with other people also living their life you know what i mean yeah like they're just generally like i don't care if you like sucking dick i'm just i guess do that on your own time (laughs) well the incredible thing that i've noticed is how many people are economically really far left when you actually look at what they are in favor of policy wise right. but they get caught up in culture war bullshit yeah like they get caught up in like trans bathrooms and you agree with them on like unions and and health care yeah. and and all these different economic issues but you know people in power manufacture the hands of armageddon yeah the, the hands of armageddon manufactures these uh these these wedge issues that really don't mean, mean anything. anything yeah like it doesn't mean and it doesn't impact your life in any meaningful way if a transgender person uses the stall next to you. Yeah. But they 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 get people foamed up about it to the point that they actually cause real world violence. Yeah. And and even like property damage, like the proud boys like busting up uh like the electrical grid in some towns. Yeah. Just because they heard there's a, a drag queen story hour going on. But anyway, Shaking yeah. my head. Yeah, my point that I wanted to make with the like the anti-trans legislation stuff, um, do what you can as just a normal person to fight back against, you know, the 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 cultural panic, the you know the the the, the trans panic and all that. Like it's it's it is a manufactured outrage, and I think if you can like talk people talk to people, you know, in a calm way about it you know like on the side of trans people like you can change a lot of hearts and minds um i i think the main thing for you know for some people you just make it cringe to be a bigot if you make it like the cringy thing to do to be homophobic or transphobic like that goes a long way like if you're like in high school and you have any kind of social clout like you should make it priority number one to to make it clear to anyone that like looks up to you uh, yeah. so to speak like yeah that stuff's cringe like why why would you care that why? much about people that are uh, by and large really nice people and mm-hmm. don't harm you right um, make it make it the cringe thing to be a bigot <clears throat> just let people live their fucking life and if you don't like it and not even like if it's something that like affects you as a person right that is like interfering with how you live your life. Yeah. Like talk to someone, but mm-hmm. like if you just see a dude in a dress, like, and you don't like it, fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, I, I think it's important um, to be an ally where you can, when you can. Just we don't shouldn't... be an asshole. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just, just don't be an ass. Come on. Yeah. To get yourself to the point of being neutral, don't be an asshole. And to do good, encourage other people to not be an asshole as well. Right. Um, yeah, I just I don't think it should be all up to trans people to defend themselves because they're a small portion of the population and they already have enough shit to deal with. So and to people you know, who help are, out. Help and, out where you can. Right. And to people who are already like allies in this. Um, it's, it's also crucially important that you talk to people that, you, especially people that you don't agree with. Cause you like, I don't mean just about like policy and politics, but just like normal everyday stuff, because mm-hmm. I've noticed it's easier to talk to someone about politics and policy and easier to give them the benefit of the doubt that they believe what they're saying when you've actually talked to them about other things and know them a bit better as a person. Yeah. Um, also it just, it doesn't make society close itself off based on political uh ideology ideology 
Um, and I think it's just important for societies to, if if not accept the way one another lives, to at least respect that one another is living. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a good message. Yeah. Yeah, help out where you can. Be nice to people. Um, don't tolerate intolerance. It's a big yeah. one. Talk to intolerance's manager. Yeah, I demand to see the manager of, of intolerance. intolerance. Get me the CEO of racism. <laughs> 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 um, oh, I was going to say something. But, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely talk to people you don't agree with. Find what you do agree on. Um, if you think you can change their mind about what you don't agree with them on, but, like when it comes to stuff that like affects people, like like bigotry. But like it's if very you can, important though to respect the fact that you might not be able to convince them. Sure. Yeah. Don't be combative about it. But I think it is morally imperative to change minds where you can. Right. On right. like 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 trans issues or like like homophobia, mm -hmm. any kind of bigotry like that. Like a lot of it can be unlearned because it's just kind of what you grow up with and you don't, I don't know if this is the best way to phrase it, but you don't know better right. in a lot of cases. Oh, of course. And sometimes a lot of it, um, at least like questions and assumptions are just innocent. Sure. Yeah. And it's just that they just, they literally have not met a trans person. They don't have anything against a trans person. They just don't know anything. They literally just don't know. And, and if all they're hearing is like, you know, they're going to rape you in the bathroom. Well, if all they're hearing is, oh, yeah, they're chicks with dicks. Like, there's more to a trans person than that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's uh, I think it's just a moral good to uh, help people expand their horizons on that stuff exactly and in turn make the world a safer place and for marginalized groups lead with grace and respect yeah take the high road yeah i'm just looking at the next uh thing on the docket um this is something that i saw in an email from bernie sanders like his i don't not his like can't because he's not running for anything not his campaign thing but like i get his emails and uh, he was mentioned in this uh, CNN opinion piece. Uh, opinion, Bernie Sanders is right about capitalism. Uh, opinion by Kirsten Powers uh, from February 24th. And I read, I skimmed it uh, like a week or two ago. Um, he has a new book titled It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism. The This opinion piece kind of talks about that a lot of the points that he makes um and just remembering off the top of my head it basically goes over how he has like a really good point about how you know people feel cheated by the system right. there's really no economic upward mobility anymore mm -hmm. that that kind of stuff stuff yeah. we've talked about a lot um and i had just a couple of points that i wanted to make um you know elaborating on that um, I believe, let me see if I can skim and find it, but, um, okay. Yeah, here it is. Um, I'll read just a little bit from the uh, article. The setup for this is, um, in his book, he talks about like hyper capitalism, late stage capitalism, whatever you want to call it. But the important thing is that there's a modifier on capitalism, so anyway, from the article, quote, some people would say that capitalism is immoral no matter what form it takes, but that doesn't seem to be Sanders' argument. Rather than making the case for a democratic socialist government, Sanders appears to want a reform of American capitalism and to see the country embrace a new kind, uh, embrace a kind of New Deal liberalism. So I, I would say capitalism as a system conceptually is built to be unfair. It's built to funnel wealth uh from you know the 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 body you know the the, the body politic uh, the, the people like from the most people to the fewest people right that's kind of how it works by design that's what profit is you're just you're charging more than it costs to make the thing you gain wealth wealth begets wealth etc cetera, etc cetera. capitalists admit to that they just phrase it differently and they put a different value judgment on it so I would say that that system, certainly when you are able to change it, you you should change it. You should move on from that. 
Yeah. It works in a world of scarcity. Like if you can't really do anything about it, fine. It's like I said on the phone the other day, it's it's marginally better than feudalism. But in a effectively post scarcity world, you really should move away. When you can give people what they need, you should, et cetera, et cetera. But anyway, the point that I wanted to make with that is he's not even a real textbook socialist. He called himself a democratic socialist. Uh, a lot of people have said this. I'll say it again. It's he's really closer to a social democrat, like a Norwegian style capitalist. Yeah. Um. Just pay your so, fucking taxes. Yeah. God fucking damn it. Just yeah. Pay your goddamn taxes. So what I wanted to say with that, he, he's not even a real socialist. So calm down if you are like scared of 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 socialism, because like he's he's not that. His policies actually preserve the capitalist system because when you don't have any guardrails then you just kind of plummet towards either everyone dying off or some kind of violent revolution like that's just how it works out when you starve the population you know what my dad says about bernie he's like he, he's like he hates the capitalists but he's a millionaire now he's one of them that's i'll start off by saying that's a flawed argument uh, to say the least. Um, but yeah, that's like my least favorite argument against like Bernie Sanders and people like him and like socialism as a concept. Cause it's like, you, you've seen the meme, right? The one that's like, Hey, I think we should improve the system. And then there's like the guy that's like, uh, yet you want to, Im- or, uh, you want to improve the system yet you live in the system. Curious. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ooh, wow, you you want to change the system, yet you are trying to survive within it. Hmm. Mm. Why don't you just die? How about you die? Ah, got you. <laughs> like, yeah, with some people, seems like the only thing that you could do to, like, satisfy them is either shut up or die. Like, they don't right. want you to criticize the system, because if you're unsuccessful, they'll say that you're just bitter because you couldn't hack it. Right. But if you are successful, then they call you a hypocrite. Right. Well, I've been telling Alex, I want to become a billionaire so I can pay my taxes. <laughs> yeah. Like in like a full amount and then treat my employees super well and then like act as like a. See, that's the paradox. You can't become a billionaire without exploiting well, a lot of work. Well, act as a black sheep to be like, see, see other billionaires. See how easy this is. <laughs> yeah. But I do want to mention, though, it's not necessarily that these these billionaires are billionaires because uh they have that much liquid asset it's yeah because they own that much of a certain thing that's valued at a certain amount yeah no it's like all yeah tied up in assets and, and stocks and all which that. is in essence property so they what, still should pay their taxes oh yeah i'm not arguing that they shouldn't but uh, but it's it's not necessarily that they own well okay, and, not it, necessarily and it's still that they own a billion dollars sure it's that they own a an asset that isn't like not i mean it's sometimes it's physical like with um like tesla and gm and whatnot but like well it's almost better than having a billion liquid dollars because it's not affected by inflation because it's not affected by inflation and sorry i'm Haley's messaging me hold on um i'll finish what i'm saying um yeah it's 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 almost better than having a billion actual real dollars because when you can just borrow against the 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 uh, value of like Amazon, yeah. you effectively have unlimited free money y- yeah. that you have to pay less taxes on and less of an interest if if they give you an interest rate. Yeah, so like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, uh, Warren Buffett, these people have effectively unlimited money because of how the sy- the, the system is uh, is built. Um, so what should be done then? Should they be forced to sell that stock? Should they how would you distribute that wealth? Because either way, if they sell that stock and bring that wealth elsewhere, it's going to have to be liquidated somehow. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not a financial expert. Okay. So I couldn't really draw up the plan. But I mean, I I think it's fair to say that getting like them getting to that position was only it can only be attained on the backs of workers. Right. Um. Yeah, I don't know how you would make it fair. I don't I I don't know. Like I don't know how you would redistribute that. Um, but I would say that it should be done 
I just, I'm not the person that would be able to figure out how to do it. Okay. That's fair enough. Um, okay. I, let me see what Haley sent. Um, okay. She just reminded me, reminded me to pick her up at 520. So we can go over this, uh, last little news piece before we got to, uh, Schedule. pause the recording. Um, so this is a Florida bill, Florida. They've been on a roll in a very bad way, introducing a number of anti-trans bills. Uh, but this one is, uh, it's the, uh, I call it the actually reverse racism is worse bill. So, uh, I found this one from, uh, Alejandra Caraballo, Caraballo, I apologize. I do not know it's uh at s queer underscore on twitter uh it says florida has introduced the empower bigots act hb 991 it would classify accusations that someone engaged in discrimination as defam as defamation per se with thirty five thousand uh, dollars minimum in damages if it involves lgbtq people and someone's beliefs the truth is no defense this is absolutely chilling um and they have uh, a section of the bill, um, you know, like cropped, uh, sharing it as a, as a screenshot. Um, so it says an allegation that the plaintiff has discriminated against another person or group because of their race, sex, sexual orientation or gender identity constitutes defamation per se. Um, a defendant cannot prove the truth of an allegation of discrimination with respect to sexual orientation or gender identity by citing a plaintiff's con- constitutionally protected religious ex- expression or beliefs uh, a defendant cannot prove the truth of an allegation of discrimination with respect to sexual orientation or gender identity by citing a plaintiff's scientific beliefs a prevailing plaintiff for allegations under this subsection is in addition to all other damages entitled to statutory damages of at least thirty five thousand dollars so it would seem to me uh reading this section of the bill that if you claim someone is discriminating against you, uh, then that is grounds for defamation. And if it's on the basis of sexual orientation, um, like, like, okay, let's say like someone discriminates against you because you're transgender and they believe quote unquote scientifically that you're actually a a woman when you're a a trans man or vice versa, then you just have to deal with that. You have to be discriminated against because if you say that you're being discriminated against, then you're actually defaming that person. I'm sure that's not constitutional. That does not sound constitutionally protected. Yeah, they're just they're flipping um, discrimination laws on their head. They're they're saying that. I'm, no, I'm just I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. No, and it's sad though because this sounds completely unconstitutional because there's like an amendment for that. Right, that like you right. can't discriminate against someone based on race or sex, mm-hmm. right? And this is basically saying if you're going to discrim or if you're going to make you ac- accusation of discrimination, be prepared to ha- have to pay thirty three thousand dollars, right? Or thirty thousand dollars, thirty five thousand, thirty fucking five thousand yeah. dollars in in in, in if, over one and a half times what I make in a year, right? Um. In case the jury or plaint or whatever thinks otherwise, right? Well, that's that sounds very unconstitutional. It doesn't. As, well, yeah, it's it's just. Imagine okay, but like imagine if the amendment in the Constitution said, um, you can only make an accusation of uh of discrimination after you pay us thirty three thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, it's. I'm just trying to find the words to express how transparently um, just bigoted this law is, how much it is clearly trying to protect bigots. Right. Like, it's like this person said it. They might as well call it the Empower Bigots Act. Well, and it's it's sad, too, because um, even if you brought this to the Supreme Court and we're like, this is unconstitutional, they can't do this. Well, you have a mostly conservative court right now. Yeah. A supermajority mm-hmm. who will probably be like, we don't like trans people either. Well, yeah. Yeah. They're not even like, I, I, I believe a lot of the conservatives on the court like to call themselves 
like originalists, constitutional originalists. The Federalist Society. Yeah, the Federalist Society freaks. Um, they like to call themselves like originalists, and they say, you know, we're only reading plain face, uh, you know, the reading of the Constitution, which I take issue with as a concept because your whole job is to interpret the Constitution. But yeah, they don't really interpret the law. They just kind of shoehorn their personal beliefs onto it. What? So, no. yeah, it's exactly like you're saying. They're No matter what the law is, they're just going to twist it to protect bigots. They're going to yeah. weaponize it against, you know, marginalized groups. Yeah, I just would love to see this turned on its head. Um, if someone makes an accusation that someone's trans. Yeah. And it's like, are you prepared to pay $33,000 to a potential yeah. trans person? Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to, f- like, I'm trying wait, to this figure is a great, out wait, hold on. any way around this because it says you can't prove the truth of an allegation by citing the plaintiff's religious beliefs or their quote unquote scientific beliefs, whatever that means. You can't have a scientific belief. That's not how science works. Yeah. I can't believe that gravity doesn't apply okay, to me. Let me put it this way. Though, you can have scientific beliefs, but only if you have, like, a PhD in fucking string theory. Well, yeah. You can believe that, that, like, we get in At that point, we get into, like, competing academic theories. Right. That's just totally over the head of anyone that would be involved in this. Right. This is pretty clear cut. You can't have an opinion on it. If yeah, like, like string theory versus relativity. Like, right. That's not what we're talking this is, about. Listen, this is if... um. You know, it d- does water flow downward? Yeah. So you can't cite, you can't prove uh, someone is discriminating uh, against you by citing their religious or quote unquote scientific beliefs. So it seems like you just cannot cite bigotry as a as proof of bigotry. So okay, then um, if you're a gay bar, just don't let straight people in. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Like, there's no. Just don't let straight people in. And then they sue. And then you go. There's, there's no way to prove discrimination, uh, you know, based on sexual orientation or gender under this law. There's no way to prove it. You can't prove yeah. that you were discriminated against. I mean, that's by design again. But yeah, that stands out as a flaw. But again, it's it's just by design. It's meant to marginalize already marginalized groups. Yeah. It's fucked up. But anyway, that's that's all the news stuff that Let's I talk have. About some good news. Yeah, that's that's all that I have for news minute. Um, I like this format, a bit more rapid fire. Um, but yeah, that's uh, what I want to leave it on before we uh, do our commercial break. All right. Uh, by which I mean uh, leaving to pick Haley up from campus. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, the moral of the story is. Uh, yeah, if, if you in the audience are, uh, if, you're, if you're trans, if you're dealing with any of of this bullshit, um, you know, we're, we're a safe space for you. Join our Discord. Uh, we will be your community. Be, be the, uh, like the fifth person <laughs> to join. Uh, <laughs> it's a very small community. It's mostly just me posting TikTok links in the chat. But yeah, no, join um, if you don't have anyone else you have us uh and that's uh just that's move that. to michigan yeah and if you want to be an ally do what we said earlier do what you can um you know leverage your clout if you have any make it cringe to be a bigot anyway let's yeah. let's cut to commercial 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 buy buy Bye. this uh buy this product or service um we don't have any advertisers we don't i I'll put an ad break in, so if we get any at I any mean, point, I mean, I can buy some dynamic. beer, I guess. That's yeah. technically something. You buy a VPN. That's yeah. what I'll, I'll say. That, but I I got a VPN. I won't say which Vagina one. Vagina penis. Yeah, that's what it is. Vagina penis. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah, <laughs> buy a VPN. I bought one. I won't say which one, but it's a nice thing to have. You can- Vagina penis nipple. Vagina penis nipple by one of those. Anyway, anyway, we watched a movie this week. Oh, always oh, doing it. He's taking a little sip of whiskey. This very bad whiskey that I got from a relative. 
Oh, oh, he downed it. Oh, no. Oh, he's making the face that I make. He's chasing it with some water. I bet that's the best tasting water oh, you've ever God, had. Oh, yes. If it's, if you, oh, this, this water tastes like rain in Ohio. <laughs> Acidic? <laughs> no, clean, because all the groundwater is fucked. Oh, fuck, yeah. No, let me actually, sorry, let me rephrase this. This it, water tastes like rainwater coming from the south in Ohio. It's, or coming it, from the north it in tastes, Ohio. It tastes like that water that Obama claimed was from Flint. This water tastes like Flint water, uh, this, but in this Ohio. Water, this water looks, oh, this water's so good. Oh, I don't even know what you guys are complaining. The water's fine. Ugh. I'm good now. Anyway. We watched a movie. We watched Glass Onion. We watched Glass Onion. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I was very impressed. I was it. also, I was watching it on the floor of my dorm room uh, and I was like, today has been mediocre. I should watch this movie. And then my day went from mediocre to not mediocre. That's great. It was great. No, it was really good. And so, um, I, 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 I really hope that their depiction of ultra rich people isn't entirely accurate because the you know way they, is. the way they are it makes me sick. Yeah. Legitimately sick. No, yeah. Everyone in this movie is awful. And they like, have I, like no idea that 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 things could be worse. What I really like and this applies to Knives Out also the same like same, same detective, idea. same director and everything. Um yeah, like that both of those movies they depict a variety of awful people. Yeah. And I really like that. Like it's different types of awful. Yeah. We got like career politician. I haven't actually finished um, knives out yet. So we should actually, yeah, no spoilers. No spoilers. Do you watch that tonight? Sure. Fuck yeah. Let's do it. Um, yeah, but, uh, I, I, I like the, the kind of idea that glass onion kind of mirrors the whole how like Facebook was made. Oh Yeah. Yeah, like um, they even they even reference the social network. Yeah, right. Um, and then, so I, I like the order of this plot where it's like they don't tell you the whole story. Yeah. at the beginning, so that g- lady gets shot. Yeah, let me pull up my notes. Actually, that reminds me. Yeah, I, I put in my notes. It's like the seven layer dip of 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 mystery. It's really great. No, because like the lady gets shot, and I'm like, oh shit, I really liked her. She was cool. Why she didn't? Why did she have to die? And you see him crying. Yeah, or crying, and and then it goes like fast forward or go back in time to when this all started. Turns out, it's, we're allowed to spoil this, right? Oh yeah, yeah, full spoilers. Turns out the lady who uh, what's his face? What's the guy's name? Detective's name? Oh, uh, Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. The lady that Benoit Blanc is talking to, she uh, uh is is actually. The sister, twin sister of the lady that all the friends think is actually there. Yeah. Yeah. The first time I watched the movie, it was all the way through. And the second time I had to like split it up because like I had work and like I I picked it back up right when like the flashback happens. Yeah. And like it like I, I had noticed it before, but like it really does feel like the start of. Like the same movie, but from a different angle, you know. Right, and I, I really right. like that, like how it recontextualizes everything else that's happened. Exactly. I also love how Benoit, and, it, and it works in both contexts oh, for sure. I really love how when like uh, the uh, conceptual curtain is lifted on like what's actually going on, right? Yeah. I really love how Benoit is actually super like enthusiastic about how awesome she is at being a detective. I know that was awesome. He was super supportive and like. You're really good at this. Yeah. No, I really like that. Like at first she was, she was like drinking Jared Leto's kombucha. The hard kombucha, which is like, they remove the alcohol from kombucha, don't they? I think so. Yeah. It's basically just some expired fermented shit, but you can either have it hard or, or soft. <laughs> I soft saw, is no the... soft is the correct word, yeah. but it feels wrong to say right in that context because like a soft drink it's only called that because it doesn't have alcohol exactly um but anyway yeah so she's drinking jared leto's hard kombucha and at first he's like hey you know this is like alcohol right and she's like nah it's kombucha he's like hard hard kombucha hard kombucha kombucha. segregation now (laughs) (laughs) 
No, no, he's. Uh, we have fun here, but we have fun here. That's a joke. Benoit Blanc is an anti segregationist. Um, but no, she actually turns out to do really good detective like, work when she's shit faced. Yeah, because she like, like, especially the second time around, like when the movie starts the second time, right? You see it more from her perspective. Like you can see, like she's nervous like you feel like what she's feeling like yeah right yeah she's like in the lion's den and but like it, it you know the first time you're watching it you're just like oh she's like you know cold and distant but like you know that's just who she is you know she was she was she was wrong screwed over by these people right but like yeah you can kind of see how you know she feels nervous but she plays it off really well yeah and she you know, when she doesn't really have an answer, she finds another way to like steer the conversation. She, she chat GBTs it, yeah. She like the other people are like, "Well, we tried calling you, and that's new information to her." Yeah. So instead of actually addressing that, she's like, "Well, what would you have done if I had answered the door?" Right. Yeah, Ooh. I really like that. And they're like, "Something's off, but we can't." Yeah, put a finger on it. Well, yeah, especially because like they don't know, that like they have, they have no reason to believe that that's not Andy, right? And that, did they do they know she has a twin? Like, did they ever get into that? I think they knew, but like it was not like at the front of their minds, right? And like, how would the twin have gotten the box and stuff, right? Like, well, yeah, like I mean, how many people do you know that have twin si- Like, if you knew someone, but like they had a twin sibling, but like you hadn't really. Like, maybe they haven't met her. Maybe she just has not come up in conversation in, like, such a long time that you have no reason for her to be on your radar. Right. You have no reason to believe that that's not Andy. Exactly. They just know, like, something is afoot, but they can't really put anything to it. And they just think it's, like, you know, she's just mad that she got cheated. Right. Yeah. Which is fair, too, even if that was the real Andy. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, with like the the structure of the movie, how it like, you know, str- changes and recontextualizes, like not only does it like it, like it, it's it's fun to watch like the first half, then you see, you know, like stuff that you missed the first half, like in a, in a new angle. You're right. Like you can like the whole movie is like that. It's rewatchable. Like you notice small details like there's the part where uh, Benoit is like putting the whole mystery together at the end. He's like, well, did we really see, uh, you know, Duke pick up uh, Miles's glass or is that, you know, what Miles wanted us to remember? I wonder when they shot that, if they actually, like it's something that I just didn't really pay attention to, but I wonder if they shot it like two ways or if they, I think, no, they did because they show both versions of it in the movie. Okay. But I wonder which one they showed to begin with. They they showed what really happened. To begin with, Miles hands him the the glass. No shit. Yeah, that's why I say it's rewatchable. Like you can like you notice all of the little crumbs. Wow. Everything like every detail. I love that. Both like like there's a lot of stuff that you don't expect to lead to something that does, and then there's a lot of like like every twist, every like new like relevant piece of information like to the mystery. Like it doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's something that was already established that you just didn't think anything of. Right. Like, you know, Duke don't fuck with pineapple. Like right. that like that comes up. But and like, the, and I the whole like the I, that... I feel like a lesser movie would have done the like the Duke murder way worse. Like, oh, it turned out he was allergic to pineapple and that's how he was poisoned. Mm-hmm. Like like on its face, that's a stupid thing. But it really works in this because it's it's set up if you pay attention like that's something that should be on your radar well also the thing is like i I, we we got a background on each character pretty much right yeah and one thing i saw about duke was that he's like this alpha male like i i listen to joe rogan i listen to jordan peterson and And the irony is he lives in his mom's basement i live in my mom's basement right yeah um and we need to go back to being primal men um drive a bugatti God, <laughs> I, 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 pick, I pick fights with little girls on Twitter. <laughs> a Bugatti. I love this one. <laughs> anyway, um, so when he came off the motorcycle and was like, Duke, don't fuck with pineapple. I thought that was like, it wasn't a like allergy medical thing, right? That's a like, 
Like, yeah, I just took it as like at, at first I took it like, oh, he just doesn't like pineapple. Either he doesn't like pineapple or he thinks it's like a huh thing. Oh, a gay thing. Yeah. Or like for some reason, there's some fruity. media circus about pineapples, like what they did with M&Ms. I hear it makes your jizz sweet. Do you have an issue with that? Who, if someone's consuming your jizz, <laughs> would you not want it to be palatable? Like, no, you don't get it. Women aren't allowed to feel any uh, what sexual the hell, pressure, dude. Like, that's just stupid. No, that's just stupid. Yeah. No, it's just dumb. <laughs> it's just dumb. <laughs> like, no, and I love that bit too. Sorry, let me finish up the last thought. I when he was like, "Here, have a drink," and he was like, "Is pineapple? I don't fuck with pineapple." I thought it was like. Like, oh, the big pineapple guys are trying to advertise. Yeah, big pineapple. I trying to advertise to trans people or something, and I just don't like that. Or I don't know. Yeah. Like some dumb shit that I would expect. No, it turns out he's just allergic and it kills him. Yeah. Which is if if he can't if he started with that, he's like, no, sorry, I'm allergic. I'd be like, oh, 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 is yeah. the mystery. No, movie? that feels like too much of a setup. Right. No, they really balance it really well. Exactly. And so, yeah. Anyway, but going to the that's just stupid. I love that so much because it, it really goes off the trope that like billionaires are inherently geniuses because you have to be smart to become a billionaire. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah. Everything that Miles claims like as his own, like every Every like cool thing he has, yeah, all of the stuff that Every he idea. like shows off is something that he bought or paid someone to make, right? Like his big like his big f- claim to fame is like, yeah, I got the Mona Lisa. It's like, yeah, you just happen to have enough money to buy it, right? And I watched a video. I think it was a Pillar of Garbage video, um, kind of like an- analyzing the movie. And like analyzing, like, is Miles Braun really an idiot? Um, and it and it brought up something that I didn't even think about how like the Louvre like they wouldn't just let anyone buy the Mona Lisa or like pay to like you it's, know hold it's on priceless. to it. It's priceless. But they just assume that Miles Braun wouldn't like install an override switch, you know, to right. circumvent the the protections. Exactly. Like, they just assume, like, oh, yeah, this guy is better than everyone. Yeah. Like, of course he wouldn't install an override. Of course he wouldn't be, like, a fucking asshole. Yeah. Um, But I love how even, like, every single thought that Miles Braun has had has only been inspired by others. Yeah. As I, nothing has been an original, like, his thought, he did yeah. this. Even his outfits. <clears throat> like, in the scene where he's talking to Andy... And he's like, we got to do clear. And she's like, this shit is literally going to blow up the world. Yeah. Uh, he's wearing the Steve Jobs outfit. Like he's wearing. Yeah. Did you pick up on that? I, like, did you notice? Was he wearing jeans and a black? Uh, yeah. He was black like wearing, turtleneck? wearing the black turtleneck and jeans. He even had his hair done up different. Like he was I, I, wearing. He was even wearing. Oh, yeah. He was wearing the, the circle, Steve Jobs like iPhone presentation outfit. Right. With the Nikes and everything. Yeah. And I didn't notice this because like I hadn't seen the movie that it's from. But I guess there's like a Tom Cruise movie uh, from like the 90s where he plays like some genius guy. And he wears. Miles Braun wears the outfit like from that movie. Like everything that he does is ripped off from someone else. <laughs> And, like, another thing about that, that is, like, all of the weird shit he does is just written off as genius. And this is, like, something that I've noticed about rich people as a population. Like, if, if you do something weird, if you have, like, a weird, like, ritual every morning, you're just a weird guy. But if you have a billion dollars and you have a weird morning ritual, then that's the key to success. Well, I've noticed, like, even with business stuff... um, I can't think of any like specific example, but like I've like had instances, for instance, in like Kerbal Space Program when I'm playing where it's just like, oh, if I, you know, the 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 premise of this idea I thought would work like this, but it actually works more the opposite. I never thought about it like that. Oh, yeah. turns out that's how it works. That's really interesting. I need to do things completely differently if I want to get this one thing done. And. That's not me being genius. That's me looking at what's happening and being like, oh, this, these things need to change to make everything work better, right? At least then it's me observing those things 
and instrumenting those changes. But with billionaires, it's like one of their engineers or someone yeah. comes up to them and is like, hey, uh, so yeah, it turns out the premise of what we've been working with, a little backwards, um, we just have to fix these things and then it should work. Right. Yeah. And then they instrument it and they're like, and then they do interviews with people and they go, yeah, well, it, you know, it turns, turns out that you need to actually do it this way. And then it's, it's much better. Wow. Elon Musk is such a genius. Oh, wow. He's such a genius. No. See, that, see, that's why I don't even give him credit for like having the ideas and like, you know, you know, you started the company, like starting the company, he's just hiring people smarter than him to invent shit for him. Right. And like, even if, Elon Musk had the idea of like, what if we landed a rocket? I mean, yeah. What if goldfish could talk? Like, yeah, it's one thing to say, what if we did something? It's another thing to implement it. Well, even then, like, it's, he's he and didn't... well, it's like we see in the movie. Like, he just throws shit at the wall. He's like, yeah, NFT plus baby equals but money. Like, what was the shuttle then, Elon? Yeah. Well, objectively, what was that? It was right. a rocket ship that landed, motherfucker. Right. Like, yeah. Well, I, like even like Steve Jobs when he was like, he was like overseeing the invention of the iPod. Like, I, I guess I I'll give him a little bit more credit than I give to Elon Musk for like his stuff because he like pushed it more than most people would. Where he's like, no, like we got to make it smaller. Remember the story but, I told you. Huh? Remember the story? Yeah, with the fishbowl. Yeah, and he throws the prototype in the fucking fishbowl and he says bubbles. He gets something for being the guy that keeps pushing it. But that's all that's all to say. Well, yeah. You're an asshole if you do that. Yeah, I don't give him credit for like, hey, what if we could carry music with us uh in our pockets digitally? Right. Yeah, you're not the first person to think of that. You're not revolutionary for that. Right. You're not even revolutionary for your company actually doing it because you just paid people smarter than you to actually do it. Right. Exactly. And I don't I don't give you credit for coming up with the idea. Because if I had the money, I would do it. And And I'm a moron. You know why NASA didn't like land conventional rockets like that? I am guessing it's not cost effective. Well the R and D isn't Right. It costs a lot of money to figure out. Oh, so in Kerbal Space Program, we call the kind of landings that there that SpaceX does uh, suicide burns. You know why they're called suicide burns, Alex? How many guesses do I get? You get a half of a guess uh, because it's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because one, it's a really difficult to calculate. And two, if you do it wrong, you will fucking explode. Right. And you have people on board. It's hard enough launching a rocket. It's hard enough. Literally, it's hard enough launching a rocket. So doing it in reverse, that's got to be way more difficult. So them. Right. Exactly. So them being a government agency was like, what's a way we can maximize reward while minimizing risk? Mm -hmm. Make it a plane. Yeah, that makes sense. Da da. Actually, but it was a lot more expensive. That's the main issue. But like a lot of the hardware that went into like launching the ISS couldn't have been done without the the shuttle. Yeah. So I give them that. But my point is the idea of a landing rocket ship that can be reused and quickly refurbished and ready for the next launch. Not a new idea. Yeah. And also, might add, and then I'll stop talking about the space shuttle. They also recollected and reused the rocket uh, the solid rocket booster shells so after the solid rocket boosters come off the main fuel tank they would fall into the ocean and then they would have some boats go out and get them and they would just wash them down makes sense and then reuse that because you can do that um yeah thank you for listening to my ted talk the idea of these of this i this idea of like reusable rockets not new yeah yeah, so back to the movie. I like the idea of the glass onion as a metaphor. Um, I just, I like to talk like him. Um, <laughs> but no, I actually do like the right. like the metaphor of it. Because like it, it really, like I, I think it's a very effective metaphor. Because like, yeah, it's it's like he says, it, like it's like what Blanc says in the movie. Like, yeah, you can peel back the layers. But at the end, it's just kind of what it looks like. Like, yeah. Yeah, the billionaire killed the person that posed a threat to him financially. Yeah. And he just is a an idiot. He 
like he talk he says words that don't exist and oh. he he's he has money so we treat it like a little quirk uh instead of what it is which, well, which did, is did he say itarians or like Itar- itarian c something like that um the one well i i remember he was like yeah this is the this is the uh, infraction point instead of inflection point um but the one quote from like like the the beginning of the movie that he says that i thought was really funny is when he's like talking about the island he's like yeah this is like a commune for creativity like yeah a, what a commune that you are the sole proprietor of a commune what is and that? at and like every idea that has come up with you get to own right it doesn't sound like a commune. That okay. sounds like quite the opposite. Like that a, sounds like a you, concentration camp. No, no, I wouldn't. I mean, I wouldn't say that. But oh yeah, no, I, I really, I, I just, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's an accurate descriptor. <laughs> um, uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the detective Benoit Blanc. I love. I like. Him. I, I, love I him so much. I think I talked to you about this on the phone. He's like a way more likable version of what they tried to do with Sherlock where he's like almost too smart for his own good. He like, doesn't see like the simplest solution. Um, I, I like the, the character trait that he really hates games like among us and clue. Right. Cause 'cause he's like, I'm bad at doing dumb things. I'm bad at doing dumb stuff. (laughs) Uh, I love how he doesn't use like crazy big words either. Like mm-hmm. I, I love how when he when when time is at a at a a, a peak value, he yeah. just uses simple language. Yeah, he just talks like a person, like a person, a at, person that talks like uh, Foghorn Leghorn. But exactly. Still. Well, right, but like if if time's at a premium and and someone and it, like shit's going shitty and someone's asking why he doesn't like Among Us, he's just like I'm bad at doing dumb stuff. Yeah. I really like that. That's great. I love it. <laughs> I like that he's playing with like various celebrity cameos. Right. He's like he's he is in a video call with I I believe like a, a famous mystery author, and um the one lady from American Pie um but she's like she like plays a detective or something I don't know I haven't seen the show, but yeah it was it was it was fun like of course yeah he would be like among celebrities. That's right. fun. But like the cool ones. You know? Oh, like the cool ones who actually like, I think Benoit Blanc and um, Miles fucking whatever um, are kind of somewhat like the same sort of people, except that Benoit Blanc actually earned his acclaim. Yeah. Like he's actually good at what he does. And he's kind of reluctant to like accept the fame, you know, like he's reluctant to accept he's like, the fame cause... as you describe the world's greatest detective. Well, because, but he's yeah. also like, but I'm not Batman. Right. Well, I, I think that really like reflects the fact that he's good at a thing, but that thing isn't all he is. Yeah. Right. He's good at being a detective, but he has other parts of who he is. Yeah. He has that... like an appreciation for musicals. Right. Yeah, he has other interests than just being a detective. Yeah. Versus Miles, who's so self-absorbed in not only just image, but like the Mona Lisa and being whatever that image is. Yeah, he likes the aesthetics of success. Right. Where Benoit more likes what he likes. Yeah, he's like, he's in it for the art of like, you know, being a detective. Right. And that's what I really like about him. And like, I, I really feel like, like a sense of altruism to it. Like there's no way that you would do what he does in this movie just for the money. Right. Like he believes right. in what he does. Like mm-hmm. he believes in the cause. Well, there's that. And like, I, he's the kind of smart person that's not like Sherlock arrogant. Yeah. Or like house or like house. He's just like, I'm smart. I'm mentally stable. But I'm not a dick. I recognize I recognize that I have skills, but those skills don't make me better than anyone. Right? Did you, did you say that? You, you're really good at that. Yeah, I just I like the voice. Yeah, no, you're really good at that. I thought that was a line. No, it's it's not. Shit. Anyway, he- I got a particular set of skills. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you, and I will. I, I kill will you. kill you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I love how. Um, Oh God! What was I gonna say? You made me. You just fucking. <laughs> I will say while you're thinking of what you were gonna say. I like. I just. I. I love 
like a a classic well dressed gentleman detective, right? That wears a little ascot, right? I love. Okay, I guess this was a point of contention for some lesser viewers, but I love the bathing suit he wears. I love every outfit that he wears in this movie. Oh, the stripy one. Yeah. Just everything that he yeah. wears in this, like it's there's all oh, just the degree here's of the, class. Here's the thing, I, I love it so much. I I would wear things like that if people didn't already think I was gay. <laughs> you know what? There's no problem with that because uh, maybe hey, you know, if you're trying to get get some ladies, For maybe it, maybe it lets their guard down and they can get to know you as a person, not not just someone, you know, out on the prowl. I would like to say for the record. I am a straight guy. I don't have anything against gay people. I don't. I really don't. In fact, they're very fun. Um, wow, that just made me sound even more gay. Didn't it? Anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, um, it's just that I I have this thing about me that makes people, I guess, assume that I'm gay. Yeah, and I'm not. I but I don't have anything. I against, did. He did. I I'm not. Um, I don't have anything against gay people. They're cool. For the record, if you're a gay person, good to know. You're awesome. I, we literally had a thing at the beginning of this of me just being like, "Don't be an ass." Yeah. People. So I guess I've already gotten that point across. But all right. Well, I, I, I was gonna say, um, yeah. I just I, between this movie and Knives Out, I just get the sense that Benoit just like knows how to dress for any situation because like in this he has more of like a summertime kind of like going to a Greek island mm-hmm. wardrobe. But like in Knives Out, he's wearing like the classic, like you know, like the tweed right. shit, like the right. Sherlock Holmes looking outfit. Um, I was gonna say though, um, like he is just a regular person who is just really good at a particular thing. Yeah, I think we've already touched on this, but like, I I love that about him because it doesn't make him pompous. He's not at all pompous, and he yeah, fully very down to earth. understands that not everyone has the same skills as him, but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean they're less of a value. Right. That's why, like, when when Duke died, he was like, shit. Yeah. Like, that was a big deal to him because people have inherent value to him. Yeah. Uh, people are important, and that's why he does what he does. Yeah, he's not like Sherlock where he's like, oh, this man needs medical attention. Hey, John, who was a doctor? Go wait in the car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> take take your sippy cup. <laughs> take your sippy cup. I fill- Get in your booster seat. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I, I just- will be out in five minutes, exactly. John. I-, I just really like that about him. Um, especially that he kind of understands that everyone's kind of at um, Miles' nipple, kind of, when it comes to... yeah what they do but he also understands that like they they at least have had their own independent ideas Mm -hmm. of what they want to do maybe not as lucrative yeah but like that's why they have miles well they're yeah they're just people that had like a dream and they were kind of corrupted and And, co-opted by miles right but also perhaps an equal level of expertise and other skills that benoit doesn't have yeah right and so that's what another thing I liked about this movie. It also showed some of Benoit's weaknesses when it comes to like just talking to people sometimes and quirks that he has. And, you know, um, it showed it, it, it doesn't make him like, oh, he's the perfect suave genius. No, he's, yeah, he's, just, he's regular, just a guy, just a dude, just a he's guy. guy with skills. Right. But yeah, I, I did. I wrote down one quote that I really liked. Um, he's talking to Birdie. She's like, yeah, I just tell it how it is, you know, doing like the kind of Trumpian thing mm-hmm. where he's like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a street shooter. And, and he says, uh, it's a dangerous thing to miss, to mistake speaking without thought. I, I, I can't do the voice when I'm reading. That's a weird thing. <laughs> to memorize it. Okay. It, well, he says it's a dangerous thing to mistake speaking without thought for speaking the truth. Right. Yeah. That's. That was a that was a really good quote. That was really good. I also liked when he was talking to Miles for the first time. Uh, he's like, Miles is like, "What the hell are you doing here?" Like, I didn't invite you. <laughs> he's like, "Well, I, well, I got the box, and I, you know, I, I solved the children's puzzles, got the note, you solved the children, <laughs> solved the children's puzzles." I loved that like subtle dig so much. Well, and I because love- I just know it got under uh, Miles' skin, right? Just a little bit. But like, I love how that's kind of foreshadowed when Duke get his gets his box, and his mom is already like, "Oh on yeah," it. like she's already like, "Yeah," like we did this in the fifties. 
Yeah. Like these were puzzles in the fifties. Yeah. That's how we know. That but was like, also good characterization for Duke. Cause she's getting it right. But he's like, shut up, mom. Shut up, mom. I don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but that like another thing too, that kind of speaks to is just like, like Benoit thinks those are children's puzzles. Right. But like, how would someone know? I don't even know if he views them like that. I just know he chose that wording just to like, irritate miles a little bit right right but like what was that first puzzle where it's like it's it was the patterns on the on the wood and you look at it through a a certain way oh yeah you like look at it a certain way you can like tell something from the grain and it like reveals a button well that's like a thing from like the 50s yeah that would they would have like magazines or whatever like for children to look at and be like oh if you do this oh oh, oh, look at that but it doesn't even reflect on miles at all because he paid someone to put it together right but also i want to like speak to the fact that i feel like the reason duke's mom knew that is because that's what she grew up with yeah that's what like she did as a kid yeah right how would anyone else know that if they've never had any encounter with anything like that yeah, I don't know. I mean, they they got it. Right, they did. I think it's designed just to be difficult enough to be impressive, but easy enough that these morons can figure it out. Right. Well, feeling smart for doing it. Right. And I love how, um, how, uh, what's her face? Um, the one who got murdered. Oh, uh, Andy? And I was going to say Alex. That's you. <laughs> that, and, yeah, that's, I was a viewer. Yeah, actually, not a character. I like how Andy's Andy. Yeah. Okay. I love <laughs> love how Andy's sister. Um, she sees the box. Yeah, and she's just like. Oh, and by the way, another thing I noticed. But she the goes, second time watching it. I was. I wanted to like look, to like to like see what her hair looked like because mm-hmm. I knew the second time. Oh, that's Helen. Mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, the first time I just kind of like I was like, okay, who is this? Oh, I find out later it's Andy. Right. But like I wanted to like look like and and notice, see if I could figure out just visually who it is. And they like have her hair like in a towel, I think. Um, So that's just another like like, subtle way that they make it like. Yeah. Yeah. like, Like it's. It's it's not distracting, like, oh, yeah, you know, I can't see this person's hair, but it's not, like, in a way that's, like, right. oh, I'm clearly not supposed to know who this is. Right. But I love the scene when, um, and I'm going to go in deeper into looking at this, so apologies in advance, but I love how everyone else is working hard to solve all the puzzles to get to the center of the box. Um, but she just goes off screen, grabs a fucking hammer, and goes ham on it. I love it. That's great. Well, and I think it really shows like the two different ways of approaching a problem. Yeah. Right. You have the people who, if you know a lot, if you know a lot of information and a lot of knowledge and can quickly like extrapolate what is want, what is needed in a certain situation. Yeah. You can solve things neatly and do it that way. But then if you want to like, if it's something non-consequential, like a box that probably has a message in it. Yeah. Like I have nothing to prove. I've, why am I doing this thing? Well, I was watching, shout out to Pillar of Garbage again. Uh, he did another video. It was it was something along the lines of Glass Onions, Real Disruptor. And it was a video about like, like your mom, partly, partly about <laughs> uh, like how Helen operates in the movie. Yeah. And like that scene is brought up and he relates it to a story about uh, Alexander the Great. I forget where it was, but it was like one of the places that he was conquering. There was like an old, um, like a, I guess like a farmer that brought a wagon into town and he was like, I'm here from God. And he like tied the, tied like a cart to this post in town and he tied the rope into like such an intricate knot. Like no one could figure it out. It was like really complex. And I guess legend had it that like, you know, someone would come and undo the knot, this really intricate knot, and they would be like their new ruler or something, something yeah. like that. And Alexander the Great came and just cut the rope. <laughs> yeah. And they were like, well, the the wagon is uh, untethered. <laughs> well, I mean, the wagon is untethered, I guess. Yeah. Fuck. 
I like, it's like to, shaking a vending machine. I like to think like like a raggedy like looking kid comes up and grabs the rope and sees the knot and she's like, it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's Just Alexander some, like, the young Great. Sheldon type right. rolling up. And he's like a good kid, goes, goes, loves his Jesus. I think this was actually before Jesus, but um, <laughs> he's just a good person who like figured it out and would have been a good ruler, but Alexander the Great beat it to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but ever, it's weird. Ever since I've watched this movie, I've been talking like a little bit more Southern. Yeah. Like a little bit like. It's a fun voice. It's a fun thing to do. And it, like, especially if you're just like a generally nice person. If you're just like nice to people and also talking like, oh yeah, I was also gonna say that reminds me, I I like the detail that like Benoit Blanc knows how he comes off to people, right? So he's like talking to Helen during the flashback, and he's like, I'm gonna go put on a little bit of the Southern hokum and you know get the guards down, and and while I'm doing that, you go search <laughs> you you go search the the rooms or whatever, right? Whatever he has the her do. Southern hokum. Yeah, I love the like, slang. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just oh. be how I am, and they're gonna be distracted. I love that. So, no, I love all the little neat words like hokum. Yeah. Oh, dude, I wish I want to. So here's the thing. I'm more. I'm like Miles. I'm just stealing all these. <laughs> All these words, because I love how they feel. They oh yeah, like in your mouth. They yeah, poke them. Ooh, it's so like oh, yeah, it's to, so rich. It's a rich word to call back to the menu. It has it's a very a good mouth word. feel. Yeah. Oh, dude, poke them. Just say it. Just say poke them. Poke them. Oh fuck, it's a tasty word, man. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just reading through Bloody my notes stories. again. I have. Uh, oh. I I was like, why do? What does that note mean? Um, he immediately ruins the the murder mystery puzzle. Oh, I love that! I love that part so much. Oh my god! And I feel bad for completely forgetting about it until just now. No, I'm actually happy because it's like it's like the extra McDonald's fry in the bottom I, of the bag. Yeah, and I well, I love how he's like, <laughs> are we started? Yeah, he's we, like we, checking. Like, can I can I ruin this? Now? <laughs> can I do this now? And at first, you're just like, is he? Like, there's no way he's doing this on purpose, right? right. Like, he's just, he's being an <laughs> asshole. But then he's like, I ruined your game on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> wait, did, wait, did he tell, I forget, did he tell Miles that? Was that something he told Miles? Like, yeah, he like, was like, you've gathered, uh, what was it, like eight people? You've, you've gathered, gathered eight, eight people, people here. Who want to, sh- uh, on, a mo- on a remote island, and you put the idea of murder in their heads. <laughs> It's like putting a loaded gun on the table and turning out the lights. Oh, it's oh, dude, and it's such a great because uh, that's like what. And then he steals that idea, right? And he steals way. that idea, but like, was Miles's whole idea to murder them all on the island? No, I think he just wanted to do a fun little weekend. Oh, yeah. Wait, so wait, so he just got yeah. So this is this is what I find interesting. He literally got he he like played double advocate where it's just like like you i'm not i think these people might want to hurt you miles Mm -hmm. and he's like i'm gonna get this guy paranoid because when you get paranoid you make mistakes yeah yeah catching them off guard i'm gonna catch him off guard he thinks i'm on his side not on his side because i know he probably murdered someone yeah love it fucking love it as, that's great. I'm not, I'm not Scottish. You can probably tell I'm not Scottish, but that's great. I love that's that. great. That's amazing. Yeah. No, I love it. Um, what else do I have in my notes? Um, oh, I just also want to mention um, all the little hokey little... See, I'm even taking the words now. All the little hokey uh, yeah. like props and stuff that Miles has set up. So like when the arrow is supposed to fire, right? It shows like the pink blood. Yeah, the little... And he set thing. up so many things because there were supposed to be so many little things yeah. to do, right? That was supposed to take a weekend. And um, Benoit is just like, he's like, and he like sets one or two of them off. And then like at the end of it, everyone's like, oh, well. Yeah. And then the crossbow goes off. Yeah. It was great. And you see Miles go, well. Here's your fucking iPad. Here's your fucking iPad. Is that what he said? Is that how he said no, it? No, but like that's how he gave it to him. Did he toss? I forget. Did he give it to him or did he toss it at him? 
see it's just like the glass just like the glass you don't remember if he handed it to him or because right, now he picked it up. like knowing what we know now i'm like i want to know if he was mad or if he was disappointed i think he was like frustrated that his game was ruined which frustration is a mix of matt being angry and disappointed right yeah okay yeah but i speaking of the ipad though that was a fun little a little fun little uh benoit thing where he's like right oh what do we win oh i mean i I just, I, I just thought, you know. Yeah, just cause. Just, you know, you made, you said we win. And it's funny because Benoit is totally the kind of guy like not to use an iPad for news, but to read a newspaper. Well, he was literally using his iPad to play Among Us at the start of the movie. Well, in the tub, yeah. right? I love how he's like in a chair or something when he's reading the newspaper, because that, like, the newspaper, yeah. right? Because like. I don't know that he, he values the news. That's how he wants to get it. And with his yeah. like valuable tech, like literally monetarily valuable technology, he's in the tub. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like he makes enough money to I feel like not I'm totally worry reading too about, much into it. I, I feel like he, he, he makes enough money to not have to worry about, uh, losing an iPad. Probably. I feel like that's roughly his income level. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, anyway. Um, the last thing that I want to say, unless you have um, more observations, the whole clear thing, um, uh, I wrote down uh, it aged well in the wake of the Ohio train derailment thing. The what? The clear, the like the hydrogen oh, fuel. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, that aged well in that like this, it was totally going to be greenlit. Yeah. Like capital holders. And the politicians that answer to them don't care about you and they yeah. will blow up your town and give you cancer. They're going to blow up the if, city. Yeah. They're hold on. Hold on. Hold, oh, we get to use it. <laughs> the, the capital holders give the politicians a little bit of money and then they say, I'm going to blow up the city. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah. They don't care about you. And I feel like this movie really nails that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, best movie ever. I have one more thing. You have one more thing. I think some foreshadowing. I might also be looking way too into it. Remember that scene, the scene where she's drinking the kombucha and he's like, this is hard kombucha. This is hard, hard kombucha. kombucha. Um, well, when the scene is on him, right, there's a painting behind him of a person. Did you see the painting? I didn't notice. Is it? Okay, well, there's a painting behind Can you him. describe it in great detail? I can. It's a rough painting of a person. It's just like a, like, um, like a, the general silhouette of a person, four limbs, one head, and a little red mark over the heart. Oh. Like where Andy's sister gets shot. She. I just. That's I'm cool. That's probably lo- way, looking way. I probably if I told the director that, he'd probably be like, "Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that." <laughs> probably looking way too into it. But well, they, I they do found pick out a lot of the direct, like the, a lot of the like set pieces, right? Like, like on purpose. Yeah. Like not a lot of it. Well, and that was before. To my understanding actually, is like accidental. You know, and that was actually bef- after I knew she got shot, but before I knew that she lived. Yeah. Right. So I thought, oh, foreshadowing. They're showing that she's going to get shot. That's a good bit of suspense, actually. Right. Like, you spend a lot of the movie not knowing that she's going to live. I thought it was just going to be like him being like, someone died here. Someone died, died. here. <laughs> it's like they're singing their words. <laughs> someone died like, here. Like vibrato. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just thought. Either that's like a, oh, yeah, that's neat, or that's foreshadowing for a person who's watching it for the first time and things. Yeah. <gasps> Look at the foreshadowing. Yeah. I just, I think it's all just really neat. And I, uh, I, I think Ryan Johnson has said he wants to do more. Daniel Craig, I believe, has said he wants to do more. By the way, Daniel Craig, James Bond, and Benoit Blanc, two. Of the most opposite people I, I have it. ever seen in movies. No, it's just, this is how you know he's a g- amazing Such fucking a good actor. Because he can do the serious Daniel Craig, I James did not Bond. think for a moment this man is James, James Bond. James fucking Bond, right? And so I was, I think I was talking to you about this too. Like, Benoit Blanc is basically a James Bond, like, he's doing what James Bond does, 
right? I I I mean I haven't really seen a James Bond movie start to finish, but in my opinion, he does what like a more interesting version of what James Bond I mean, does. Like, what is James Bond but literally an undercover detective? Right. Well, my understanding is he doesn't do a lot of like detective work. It's mostly like shooting people and fucking people and getting information out of people. Well, this is what I think. Like, I think he's just terrible at being un- undercover because they're always just like, oh, yes, you're James Bond. Yeah. And he's just like, how would you figure that out? I only told eight ladies that I fucked that I'm James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, three of them were my little, were my uh, goons. And he's yeah. like, also, you should probably get checked because those I don't know where those three other people came from. Yeah, we get international men of mystery coming like, through here all the all time. All the time. It's fucking nuts. Uh, gonorrhea up the wazoo. Just fucking now, crazy. You know, in hindsight, maybe we should start using more protection with people who call themselves international men of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> oh my I feel God. like you should know what you're getting into. And the legislature in this area have gotten super conservative. We've had to do like a <laughs> bunch of fucking abortions like i'm all for them making that decision for themselves like i i'm you know they're my goons but i'm here to take care of them i'm their boss um but i want them to have that right you know but also it does benefit me because they keep on they're allowed to keep on anyway my point is i know you're james bond (laughs) would you please get tied up so i can feed you to the sharks which by the way they also want to put restrictions on exotic pets which I just have these sharks. I have a, a guy Evil. to take care of the sharks. Dr. Evil, we couldn't get uh, sharks. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be funny if he's like going off about the, like, the local legislature. Dr. Evil, a lot has changed in the last 30 years. Sharks are now endangered. Sharks are now endangered. Um, he's like, I have pet sharks, but like I take care of them. I got I got a guy. He's a marine biologist. Like I'm not. Yeah, I, I clean their tank. Like I'm evil, but I'm not a monster. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, anyway that's I'm gonna all to these say, sharks now. <laughs> that's all to say best movie ever. Uh actually yeah, one of the better ones I've seen in a in a while. Yeah. No contest, best movie ever. Yeah, no, I had seen this after like kind of a depressing week okay. and this like lifted me out of it. Oh dude, I just something about like a southern like not cocky, very relaxing, really relaxed. Just, oh yeah. That's what I was going to say guy. earlier. That's what I was getting at. Uh, I about that. like the people involved seem to want to keep it going. I really hope yeah, they make more. I do too. Uh, I hope glass onion gets a, a Blu-ray release. When did this people, movie release? Uh, it came out just this last year, like okay. late last year. I'm surprised. It, it, it was in theaters for like Oscar. A, actually, I think it was nominated. Really? Yeah. That's good. I'm happy about that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I, I hope it gets a physical release because it's it's a Netflix exclusive right yeah, now. Yeah. Um, like Ryan Johnson, the director, wants it to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope Netflix does it. They don't really do that a lot. But like, I think there's more pressure for it for this movie. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope that I, 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 hope, I just hope yeah. they do that. More, I hope they make uh, more of these. I could watch. Just a whole series uh, I just of, make of a Benoit mini-series. Blanc solving mysteries. Let's just make a mini series. I mean, yeah, whatever form it takes. I just want, I just, more, I of want this. more of this man. Like, and I can do with less camera tricks. Like, it's fine. I just want. It's like, good. The it's cinematography is really good. Cinematog- cinematography. Cinematography. Is Taste, great. It's, it's tasty. Oh man, it goes great with the chai latte. Um, it probably would. Actually, now that I think about it. Anyway, um, uh, but like. I prefer the quality of the acting and the quality of the storyline over the like fancy camera stuff. Yeah. And you don't need a huge budget to do that. You just need someone with skills. Right. And obviously Ryan Johnson Johnston is really good at doing um, is really good at doing mystery stuff. Hence the reason Star Wars isn't very Mm -hmm. good. But um, yeah. And I want to say Ryan Johnson. uh, Good director. Uh, director. He gets a lot of hate. Because he directed The Last Star Jedi. Wars. Star Wars. So, yeah, Star Wars. The Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah, he gets a lot of hate for that. And I don't know if he's like fully recovered from, from that kind of affecting his reputation. Well, like people I that mean, people that get movies like him and his work, but there's just like a mob of people that think the sequel trilogy is objectively bad. That just hate him no matter what because he made a movie they think they don't like. Right. Well, also, like, 
he's a director, but let's put this in perspective of like at least the Star Wars movies in perspective of who he was making the movie for. This was a Disney movie. Yeah. Well, I, I, I like what he did like with the, like his creative choices with the movie, like where he took well, it. Well, that's what I'm trying to say he, though. Yeah. He took it in like a kind of like a deconstructive kind of uh, direction where he's like taking it in like a, you know, there are no heroes in war kind of uh, kind of well, way. Right. But like also you have to remember that his job is to be a director and he's doing a Disney movie mm-hmm. and he goes to the executives with shots of this and they go, that's not really on brand. Yeah. Right. But that is the fundamental issue. I think with the star Wars movies is that they tried to be too much of the Disney brand. Yeah, they're trying to like, which is fundamentally not Star Wars. Well, by the, the, way. the problem with that, with like modern Star Wars, and we will get to the rest of the show, is <laughs> they're trying to make content instead of movies. Like every right. new, se- like the Book of Boba Fett was content. I'd agree. Yeah, and like, I don't know. I just wish they would let people take more like creative risks with it. Well, because like, just... there are people that are passionate that will like do work on it people have made like like re-edits of the of the disney plus shows that i i haven't watched them personally but they're pretty well liked and they're seen as a pretty huge improvement so like there are people that will do free labor to make a better product so just hire people that have a passion for it yeah i mean i just wish disney would have instead of getting like the best director i wish they would have gotten um the best Star Wars director. Yeah. Well, they they did like they they have Dave Filoni. That's what I was talking and, like, about. And like John Favreau. But they were on Clone Wars, right? Yeah. And well, so, they also worked on like The Mandalorian, and I was I was going to say that right. that's why like that was such a success because it had people that had like a passion for it working on it. But now they're trying to just recapture. They're just trying to do The Mandalorian again. Right. Well, um, I wish for the the sequel movies that they would have just um been like hey Dave Filoni listen you know what the fans want and what the fans want is what is the most lucrative so with that being said um here's kind of what we want to do for a movie you go off of that talk to the fans talk to the people you need to talk to and make a movie yeah well the problem with that too is there's there's what the fans say they want and what would make a good movie and I think that's something Dave Filoni specifically is good at yeah. I think he's good at being like, he's good at being like, um, ooh, you know what I really liked when I was a kid? I really liked um, uh, fucking Darth Maul, right? What if he didn't die? Yeah. Right? That's just like fucking movie. That's just like imagination candy right there. Yeah. Let's bring him back in Clone Wars, right? And make an amazing character arc for him, right? That makes it out like he's not just this a phantom menace, right? Mm-hmm. He's actually an individual, He's also an attack of the clones. Right. And he did a Revenge of the Sith. Right. And I just love all that. And like. Yeah. Yeah. I think that would have been such a great thing to see in the sequel. In the yeah. sequel trilogy. Well, yeah. The reason I say that like there's a difference between what the fans say they want and what would make a good movie that they would actually like. like the reason I say that is because they did a lot of heavy course correction with the rise of Skywalker where they just shoehorned in a lot of fan service yeah and a lot of what fans said they wanted and it turned out to be a terrible product you see i think what disney did was milk with oats in it and what dave filoni does is oat milk Mm -hmm. right he puts it together in a way that's palatable in a way that makes sense in a way that's like you want to put this with other things and you want to do more with it Whereas Disney was just like, here are the raw ingredients, and we're just going to put like a little like happy smiley face on it. And no matter what you make, we're going to ask, can you just make the Mandalorian, though? Can you just make it like the Mandalorian? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Or like, and sometimes Disney lands on good things. Like, it's really hard to fuck up like peanut butter and jelly. Right. Right. And they, they make something PBJ like the Mandalorian. Right. Mm-hmm. And then they go to Dave Filoni and they say... Can you just keep doing that? Well, how many things are are that simple and that good? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the problem with corporate art, like like corporations trying to produce art, 
the problem is the people that run corporations don't understand art and running the way that you run a business and the way that you produce art are two diametrically opposed right. operations. Right. Like art involves a lot of risk. And when you're running a business that like that's the most risk adverse risk adverse uh, profession you could get into. Exactly. Well, and that's the thing though, like So that that's why like with uh with like studio productions, that's why after a while everything starts to feel the same mm-hmm. because they find one thing that works and they try to just keep repeating that. Right. Well, also I feel like there's this dichotomy of a conflict of interest when it comes to if you are a an executive who the main goal is just making money. That's the main goal. Right. Not necessarily making a good story but making a story that makes money and so if you try to become a fan of something that's being created by something that you oversee you could also have a conflict of interest of like i think this would be a good storyline but i don't think it would make a lot of money yeah or i think this would be a shitty storyline but i think it would make the most money yeah but also you're an executive. You're not a fucking playwright here. Right. Yeah. And while we're on it, I, I will mention like like that model of production also limits the kinds of stories you can tell. Because of course, if yeah. you're being financed by a giant corporation, like you can only criticize corporations so much. Right. Like that's how you get a lot of media that doesn't really critique the system so much as like you know, it's like when people talk about crony capitalism, like mm-hmm. is is the problem crony capitalism or is it capitalism? Right. Is it like like shows that seem anti corporate are just anti, you know, like quote unquote evil corporations that like <clears throat> do it wrong, you know? Yeah. Like like Amazon produced shows like they're not really they're not like against like the system that produces these evil corporations. But like they'll they'll make shows like they'll they'll fund shows that are like yeah this this particular corporation is really bad, right? Yeah, yeah. It it just it limits the kinds of stories you can tell because it's like you know we don't want to piss off advertisers. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Glass anyway. Onion. I would say best movie ever. <laughs> best movie ever. <laughs> That's all to say. <laughs> That's all to say. Glass Onion. Good. All right. You want to get to recommendations of the Let's week? Let's get to recommendations I, of the week. I would say write down any that you have, but you didn't bring your computer. You, you I moron. I, I, that's true. Are you not going to eat your little bean? I, I'm I'm recording. Are I'm you on not going to eat your bean? Haley gave us little uh, little snap peas. Why aren't will, you eating your snap pea, Alex? I, I will eat it later. Anyway, do you have any recommendations? You do I'll yours. let you. I'll let you do yours because you got to think of them off the top of your head. Ah, oh, shit! Fuck. Um. Duh. Duh. Uh, duh. <laughs> now you're making me fucking blank because I'm under pressure. Um, heeled shoes, guys. If you, I'm not sure if I already said this, but okay, I'm gonna cut you off there. <laughs> <laughs> um, men. You can wear heel- heeled shoes as well. That's not fruity. That's yeah, just Yeah, you were style. grasping for a recommendation. <laughs> the concept of heeled shoes. Is that <laughs> too broad? Is that too... <laughs> is that too broad? I I think so, yeah. <laughs> Come on, let me continue. The Have you tried shoes. milk? <laughs> <laughs> Listen... We like to drink a lot of things. I like to drink water. Water is delicious. <laughs> Heeled shoes, man. This, you can be stylish and tall at the same time. A nice pair of Chelsea's. Nice pair They're of Chelsea's. They're easy to put on. No, let's say it like Those Benoit are my go-to Blanc. easy shoes. A nice pair of Chelsea's. A nice pair of Chelsea's. Um... They're great. They make a nice click-click when you walk. You're, the tip of your foot is like they nice They make you and sound narrow. like a girl boss. Or that. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess however you view it. Um, yeah, I like, I like the pair that I have. They have about like a, what do you call that? A three inch heel? I don't know. I'm going to call it three inch heel I don't know. on it. Um, uh, yeah. You'd think I, I'd know what three inches looks maybe like. Maybe it's two inch. I think it's a two inch heel. Anyway, um, they're nice. They make a click, click and a look like a beetle. The beetles. Look at the beetle. Look at the beetle. I was talking about an octopus. I was talking about an octopus. <laughs> anyway, I have a few recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first, I want to recommend 
the concept of happiness <laughs> I just think is great. Try to be happy more. Uh, I also like the element oxygen. I like sunshine and puppies. Uh, I like... <laughs> Anyway, so Gavin, I was talking to you on, about this on the phone like a week or two ago, but um, I I listen to Marvel's pull list. It's a, a weekly podcast that that they do, where they have a couple of fucking interns or whatever talk about the comics that came out that week, and they usually I do like love a Ant Man. They do like a deep dive on like a particular I like story Ant-Man. arc or or one shot or whatever. That's how they sound, they usually by the way. interview like the author involved. It's really cool stuff. But the one thing that I don't really like about it is like how closely tied it is to Marvel like as a, as a company cuz like you like oh yeah, you just so happen to both love every single comic series that is out right now. Like it it like it, I don't. It's not that I want them to like trash, like any series, but Listen, it doesn't Alex, feel like it doesn't um, feel like any time they. Maybe recommend, you just don't get it. Maybe you just don't get you know the secret genius of Ant Man. Well, like I don't feel like I'm listening to a recommendation. I feel like I'm listening to an ad. You know that you're just not on the same level. Yeah. Well, whatever. Um. Yeah. I just. I wish there was something like that. That was you know produced weekly like that show is that you know went in depth like they do um that just was like independent because like i want like actual people's opinions like a like, podcast yeah well like <clears throat> like a superhero well, podcast my first recommendation is a podcast called absolute comics uh it's by the the guy that does the comic story and youtube channel but the one thing that i don't like about it is they upload like once every month if that Mm. and it's not really like like they'll kind of like rant for like an hour about a particular thing i like it they know a lot about the industry they yeah. have a lot of good insights like they know like the process they know a lot about like the creative oh, side of it i now have another recommendation okay we can get to that in a second Sorry. but yeah i just i wish <clears throat> that it was more of like a weekly thing like if you know i wish they talked about like stuff that's like coming out they gave like recommendations like it's it's surprising how little like week to week coverage there is of like comics that are coming out cuz it's still like a fairly popular medium but right yeah there's just not the same kind of coverage that you see for like movies and TV shows right right and you like you don't really know like the, the part of why it's hard to get into comics is you don't know what's good or not. You don't know what to read. You get very little feedback too. Yeah. Well, like the most one of the most popular series is has been for since it came out, The Amazing Spider-Man. Right. And it's been shit for the past like decade. Like people have not liked it, but it it it's just it's still one of the most popular ones because people know it. But you don't like like people have been talking about it on YouTube, how bad it's been. But like I, you just you don't see a lot of like recommendations for what to read and what not to read. And like what little weekly coverage there is, is just from the people that produce the comics. Right, right. Big comic. Big comic. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's that's just kind of that. That's been my thing lately. Like I, I've been getting into comics and reading a lot of different series, but yeah, I just wish there were more people covering them. Um, and I don't know. I feel like if there were more people, like with the Amazing Spider-Man thing, for example, I feel like it's kind of a niche thing. Like the the comic run, like right now, like people don't like it. It's pretty negatively regarded. Um, but I just think there's not enough people making a stink about it to make like a, an actual meaningful change. Right. Because the problem yeah. isn't, any of the particular writers like they have Zeb Wells on it right now. And he's doing like, it's fine. I liked the first like arc of the series. Then it kind of went into like a big, like crossover event that I wasn't too jazzed about, but like, you know, there was something there, but the problem is editorial. Like the people like making the, the big decisions don't want Peter Parker as a character to progress past like you know his 20s basically 
Well, like he, he had to... progressed for decades. Like right. he was married to Mary Jane Watson. Like they had a kid on the way, but they were like afraid to let the character progress. So they just, I, I might have talked to you about this, but they had him literally in universe make a deal with the devil to save Aunt May's life. And in, in exchange, he gave uh, Mephisto, like Marvel's devil, um, his marriage to Mary Jane Watson. Like he, like the devil wanted to just undo it. And the the weird thing is, like, the issue before that happened, uh, he was, like, being taught, Peter was being taught why that's a bad decision, because he's running away from his responsibilities. And then the very next issue, he's like, I'm actually going to make that deal with the devil. And that's that's been the the the, the status quo at Marvel. Like, like, he is always either unemployed or, like, on the verge of bankruptcy. He's always, like, just being kicked around. Like he, like he's always had like the Parker luck, but it just feels like it's taken to such an extreme now where he's not even allowed to be even momentarily happy. Right. And yeah, like it, it's all just a, uh, an editorial decision. He's not like they, they, I haven't read the most recent issue, but they basically had him be like, yeah, I don't actually love Mary Jane Watson. Like I think of her like a sister actually. And like, bro, that was your soulmate for decades. You, made out with her upside down (laughs) on probably assumably most multiple occasions yeah yeah it's just there i don't get what they're trying to do because he's been stagnant right he's he's just been stagnant and and like his stories are are boring because it doesn't feel like he's allowed to have any character growth or development or learn any meaningful lessons yeah yeah i just wish they would let him grow up you know, let him have just a steady job, right? Like he's had like steady jobs before. Like he has had degrees of success, but for one reason or another, they always have to take it now, away. I hate to say this, but does Tony Stark exist in that universe? Yeah. So like, why don't they have a thing where like, I, he, I don't know, he gets a job with like Stark Industries, but like Stark knows that he's Spider-Man, right? And has him like as a lead developer on certain technologies. Well, right now, Spider Man is Peter is working at Oscorp. Uh, so, you know, Norman Osborn. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah. like good now. It, there was like a villain that took away, he was called Sin Eater and he like took away Norman Osborn's sin. So, like, now he like he remembers doing evil shit, but he's like not evil now. It's kind of a weird thing, but that's what's going on right now. Meanwhile, Stark Industries like has its own stuff going on. Basically, Tony Stark isn't rich anymore. He spent all of his money buying up all of like all of like the weapons of mass destruction in the world. Oh. Like all of like the supervillain weapons. Right. And he's like his whole thing is he's like, Yeah, I bought all of these. I'm gonna dismantle them so no one can use them. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he like spent the last of his fortune on. Right. And it, it was a cool thing. Like it was it was like what they had him doing at the end of his uh most recent run and you know what he's doing at the start of this run I just realized if um dr oz started a company it'd be called it should be, be called oz corp with a z so it's legally distinct right yeah <laughs> but yeah i just i don't like that they won't let peter parker progress like everyone that like cares about the character wants him to be able to like get married have a kid like just be happy deal with, with his that. life right because they just they're they're just not doing anything with the character they just have him reset to the state the same status quo where he's just he's unsuccessful hold on hold on they tell him hold on this this is what marvel editorial says to peter parker you are radically radically unsuccessful. unsuccessful you are a giant loser like a giant who is a loser and also a giant loser that's yeah, what they say to him. Anyway, you had a recommendation. Kerbal Space Program Two uh, has come out on early access. Did I already talk about this? I think you talked about it last week. Really? I think so. Anyway, uh, I recommend buying it, uh, if not to support like the devs who are making this. Um, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. If not because the game is cool and fun, um, but to support the uh the devs who are currently making it. Alex is pulling it up right now. It's like 50 some dollars. Yeah, I think early access is 50, but I wanted to point out 
Kerbal Space Program 1 is... Until March 15th, so next Wednesday when this comes out. Uh, it's seventy. The first game is seventy five percent off, so it's ten dollars on Steam. It's ten dollars on Steam. Um, and while I'm talking about video game prices, I saw this earlier. Um, uh, Jedi Fallen Order is on sale on Epic. Uh, the standard, like the base game, is four dollars, and the deluxe edition is five dollars. And like that's that's kind of a hard deal to beat, right? Uh. Uh, anyway, uh, people don't seem to understand that early access means the game isn't fucking ready yet, guys. It's not done. It's not a finished product. Um, that's why they don't have all the parts that are in KSP one. Yeah. Because yeah, people are like review bombing the game because it's not finished. Right. Cause it's not finished. They told you this. Yeah. It's not a finished product. Um, yeah, I think the problem is a lot of developers, well, a lot of publishers use early access as like sort of a shield, you know, like they'll release right. an unfinished product um, and just keep it in early access forever. Yeah. Yeah. So I think people are burned on that. I think yeah. that's why they're kind of primed to react this way. Yeah. Um. So, you know, they're still working on it. They're going to make new parts. They're going to optimize the game for better GPUs and better CPUs and, um, uh, yeah, I I'm better excited. RAM, better RAM. And I'm excited when they do because I play hard drives, exactly, better SSDs. I play Kerbal Space Program one on a, a Surface Pro eight and it runs very well, yeah. I'd say. Um, tried running KSP two on my Surface Pro eight and it was laggy as all hell at the best. I can get around 20 frames per second at the absolute worst. It was like three. Yeah. Um, which makes sense. It's a new game. It's not as optimized as right, it's probably going to right. be. And I'm not saying that it doesn't have bugs. I'm not saying that it doesn't have issues. I'm not saying that $50 isn't a lot to pay for yeah. an early access game. Yeah. The thing is, that's just, that comes with the territory. That's what you should expect. Right. The trade off is when they update Kerbal Space Program 2 and optimize it for better hardware, um, you get that finished game for 50 bucks when for other people it might be astronomically more no pun intended yeah um so that's why i bought it i also bought it because definitely not terrestrially more no <laughs> it has to be out of this world yeah. um uh you know the, the part of the reason i bought it was because i wanted to support the doves in their endeavor to make an awesome game so that's why I bought it. I knew it wouldn't run well on my computer, but I would rather have it on Steam um, for when I do get a decent computer yeah. um, than to have to buy it after it's a finished product and pay yeah. a premium for it. So Yeah, Steam is the best platform to own a game on. Um, like if you plan on having a decent computer at all, because anything right. else that you buy it on is going to be a dead end platform. Like if you, right. uh, does it have like a PlayStation release or like an Xbox, Xbox release? But it's shit. Oh, it's absolute shit. Yeah. So like if you had an Xbox and you bought it on Xbox. Oh, I mean, like, like KSP two. Yeah. No, sorry. It's only or, PC right well, now. Well, either one of them. Uh, KSP one has an Xbox release. That's shit. Yeah. So like if you have like, 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 like you have like a Surface Pro eight. Right. Like you can either like run it pretty fine and have it on steam or well i guess in this case you, you wouldn't be able to run it that well on xbox but right anyway what i'm trying to say is it's best to have it on steam uh just because uh, when you eventually do have a decent computer it's like, all there yeah it's all there you already have it you don't need to do anything extra like it's mm -hmm. just there i have a pa the thing is i bought it from the original um uh makers of Kerbal space program and so once they like handed, they sold the company and now it's a different software company. Okay. Um, but I'm surprised that they were able to keep the books straight and everything. Cause my account is still with them. Uh, it shows that I bought the game. So whenever, like I didn't buy it through steam, I bought it directly from the source. Well, it probably gave you like a steam key. Did it? Well, what do you, so how do you, like you, you, what, you play the game. You do you run it through steam. No. Oh, you like run it through, like through I your own like, installer? The, I download the installer and then I reinstall the game that way. Oh, yeah. I mean, they probably have to have some kind of like legacy account system. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, I, I like 
that about them that they didn't just take my money and then when I when they did the merger or sold off to a different place yeah they were just like well, there, fuck you there's probably some kind of like consumer protection law oh, against that. that yeah um but uh one last thing to note about Kerbal space program one is that they're not working on it anymore they released the final update um and they might do some bug patches yeah here and there well now but, they're just focusing on the new game which the, makes sense which makes complete sense it has optimized graphics um drez which is a planet in that in that game now has a ring system Ooh, like a ring a ring fucking ring it's fucking dope okay i'll get off my soapbox <laughs> and uh let us continue all right yeah i have a couple more um speaking back to the comics discussion i started reading uh a few dc series um i mentioned last week the new Superman series is really good. Um, I got into action comics and detective comics. Um, and But I wanted to talk about uh, this Batman arc that just started. Uh, so starting with issue 131, uh, they started this, this new like story arc where, and I, this, I'm just picking it up from here. It's like a result of what happened in the last story arc, but I don't really know a, a lot about that. Um, Something called Failsafe sent Batman to like a an alternate dimension, and it's a Gotham that it's doesn't. The Kerbal Space Program universe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They have a very well funded space program. Um, no, it's a it's like an alternate Gotham that doesn't have a Batman, and it's like run by this guy. And I, I think his name is Red Mask. He's like he's the red mask. Wait, is that but, is just like general blanket name? Like that's, that's just what people like, call that's, him. I think that's what he's called. That imagine being like, like uh, yeah, back in imagine being from like a state and going to Gotham and being like, yeah, we have a. It's a better name than Corn Pop. But better name than Corn Pop, but like you're from who Georgia. was a bad dude? Bad dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they ran a lot of bad boys. <laughs> you're from Georgia and you go to Gotham and you're like. Yeah, we have a governor, and he has a attorney general, and uh, you know we have all these different systems of. Oh wait, what's your what's your what's your guy called? The Re- Red Mask. The Red Mask. <laughs> the Red Mask. Who is this individual? Is this is the Red Mask in the room with us right now? <laughs> where did the where, where did the Red Mask touch you? No, but like, just so, imagine being like. You're a part of you're part of the United States, right? Yeah. You're not you can't this is illegal. You can't just run it like this. Yeah. How do you you're too big to have this happen? So anyway, sorry. Red Mask is a bad dude. Runs a bunch he of bad runs boys. Runs a lot of bad boys. Um but yeah, it's like a I don't know where exactly like the timeline splits, but I do know this like the version of Bruce Wayne that existed in this universe um instead of becoming batman he became a social worker okay and he ends up getting murdered um by i don't remember if they said who exactly did it but like there's like a corrupt mayor and like it's basically like a police state run mm-hmm. by roided up cops so not too dissimilar from a lot of cities so like here. atlanta so <laughs> um so they got their they inspiration like, for this so they from like, Atlanta, right? Yeah. So they like weaponized like mental health, quote unquote. Really, it's just like a guy deems you insane and then throws you into a pit, basically. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a fun little like fish out of water thing. Cause Batman, like on page one, is like passed out in this new Gotham City, and people like steal his utility belt. So he has fucking nothing. His costume is all torn up. He basically just has like some of the clothes on his back. I mean, was he walking around and he, you know, he was just walking. And he felt something was kind of off and he went, something yeah. in my ass. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he, he like, you know, forms new alliances. He gets in with like the, like the underground, like freedom. Railroad. Fighters. Yeah. No, that's what it is. <laughs> He meets Harriet Tubman. <laughs> I still remember that one comedy sketch you sent me about the guy talking about how this uh, movie executive wanted to make an underground ra- railroad movie, but having a white actress playing Harriet Tubman. 
And he's just like, imagine how objectively funny that would be. <laughs> yeah. Harriet Tubman, but she's played by Ryan Gosling. <laughs> and, and then like you have Samuel L. Jackson playing Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway, anyway I like here. we have fun here. I like the story <laughs> um, started with issue 131. If I didn't mention that. Um, yeah, I like it. Like the, where I I just read 133. And in that one, he like makes a new sort of makeshift Batman suit. Like he takes up the mantle to like strike fear into like the people running the shit. Right. To be like, hey, you know, someone's keeping you in check. And it's not the actual constitution of this law. Yeah. Law. Yeah, we are in a we are in no man's this land. This is technically anarchy. But yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, um it well, it's kind of like Iron Man three in that, you know, it takes the guy who has all of the money and power, it puts him into a situation where he has none of that and he has to build it all up again. Yeah. And I really like that. I wonder I like what that Batman kind of has to say about constitutions. He probably likes them. Probably, I would probably, imagine, probably thinks they're good. But like I can see because he likes order. He does, but I don't think because he's just like God. The man's a constitution. They just don't follow it. Yeah. Constitutions don't do anything. I'm a constitutional originalist. I am the constitution. <laughs> Imagine if RoboCop was like, "I am the judge, jury, and executioner. Also, the constitution and the legislature." Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, also one thing that I like about DC, like the like the main like flagship series is that they usually have like the main story and then like one sometimes two like like side stories. So like the main story, like the A plot, like it's like a regular length story about like Batman trying to find his way around the new version of Gotham. And then like the last like third is Robin trying to locate Batman, but along the way he is like trying to I guess like stop um, I, I forget which like hero the villain is associated with, but he's this guy that like turns people into toys. Oh, yeah, it's an interesting concept. But he's like, I guess, teleporting people to like this weird like dimension. The island of mis of uh, what is it? The uh, island of 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 misfit, misfit toys. toys. Well, he's like teleporting people to this like weird pocket dimension type thing, <laughs> and like keeping them prisoner. So like along the way, like. On the journey of trying to find Batman, Robin also has to stop this guy and get all these people home. So, okay. like, it, I just think it's cool I, that I they have, like, the it, main story and, like, an additional little bonus story. I think it'd be funny if he sends them to the Island of Misfit Toys and they look at the person and they go, one of us, yeah. one of us. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That's, that's, that's how, how it goes. It. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I have one last recommendation. All right. Um. So yeah, I I think I've talked about Coffeezilla before. Mm -hmm. He was on Joe Rogan recently, wasn't he? I that's what I was gonna say. Right. He was on Joe Rogan, and I've been listening to it, and it's a good interview. Um, it's kind of amazing how sane Joe Rogan can be when he has the right guest. Right. Yeah. But like, you see a little bit of like Fox News grandpa slip out sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but it's it's a good interview. Um, like. I really like how in depth they get about different like crypto scams because mm -hmm. that's Coffeezilla's main thing. He makes videos like debunking and calling out these these scams. Like he's done a lot of coverage of the the Sam Bankman Freed situation, mm -hmm. like with FTX, and he does a really good job of explaining what happened and like the order of events mm -hmm. and what led into what. And uh, another big thing that he did that got him a lot of attention was he uh, did like a like a takedown like series on Logan Paul's yeah. NFT grift. I saw Logan Paul's reaction to that. He threatened to take him to court. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was like a lot of backlash, I guess. And he was like, yeah, oops, sorry. I actually what I meant to say was thank you for pointing this out, Coffeezilla. I had no idea. Even though I hired known criminals. Right. Known scammers. Right. Yeah. Anyway, do you have anything else before we uh, wrap it up? Just uh, tell, tell the people that you love that you love them. And that, no, this isn't a school shooting. Okay. 
All right. Because I, I've i heard stories of people telling their parents they love them just randomly. Oh, through no. Text. Oh, no. That's the only reason I mentioned oh, that, I realize, by the way. I realize what you're getting at right. now. Yeah. And so they send texts to their parents. Like, hey, I just want to let you know I love you. And the parents are like, I'm coming to school right now. <laughs> so... I mean, just tell the people that, you know, that love you, that you love them back if you do. If you do. If you don't, be honest with them. Yeah, if you don't, cut them off. Yeah. I mean, not just cut them off. Like, I don't Just let them save their dignity, I suppose. Um, uh, yeah, but uh, that's that's it. That's all I got. All I got to say all about right. that. And that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to another Thank episode you. of Motivate to Say. If you liked it, then like it. If you subscribe, can I, can I do the outro? Yeah, yeah do it. it. Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you liked it, then like it. Uh, if you want to subscribe, then subscribe. Um, you should also follow us or download our whatever's on fucking uh, Apple Apple, uh, yeah, Apple Podcast. Yeah, and is that it? Yeah. Apple, Apple Podcast. Apple iTunes. You can leave a review there. iTunes and leave a review if you want to. Uh, you can I, also leave a review on Spotify. On Spotify, uh, Spoofy, and um, you can uh, you can get, uh, donate to our Patreon. Um, Dollar a month gets you early a- access to episodes. What he said. Yeah. Um, and we we love you. Yep. Yep. We love you. Yep. Let's uh, let's let's uh, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. These trickies. Yeah, these trickies. These trickies. I think this is the first episode where we didn't like just like use that every two seconds. You know what? Felt like it was missing something. <laughs> I have a big dick. <laughs>